What the heck is FOCO? Our students give us their thoughts on the school year so far, and is the whiteboard the most important learning tool at university? Find out next on The Heat Exchanger. Hello and welcome everybody to episode 5 of the Heat Exchanger podcast. This week's episode brought to you by MATLAB. Error in script podcast episode 5, unrecognized function or variable MATLAB. How you doing today, Vince? Good man, long time no talk, I guess. It's been um, like over a month, so it, it has. It has. It's a it is currently Monday, October the 4th. For those of us that are listening, that's when this recording is going on. It is a miserable Monday morning just super rainy and terrible and my feet are wet but you know i'm happy to be here yeah i drove in this morning and um there was an accident on the on the freeway so it took me 30 minutes to get from you know the the split between qw and 403 of course yeah uh on on the famously terrible um it took me 30 minutes to get from there to mac because the two lanes uh on the 403 was blocked so it was great i took the back road Six and then Six. back down on the and then on planes or whatever. Great. That's yeah. how I get home to uh, beautiful sunny Dundas. But uh, <laughs> uh, actually, this is a good chance for us to mention to the listeners that this is the first episode that we are actually recording together in studio. Yeah. Yes, the studio being BSB B105, uh, my office, and we have towels draped over the desk we're using to record this to try to soften the sound because the acoustics in this room are not good. <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the, this goes with our our theme for today's episode, right? Just, you know, back to school, actually being back in person. So this is the perfect um, setup for, for our episode, I would say, JK. Precisely. We, we were saying in the last episode that we were excited to be going back. We talked about places to eat on campus, what we were excited for, what we were not excited for. And I would say... This is the perfect opportunity for us to reflect back on what we said back then, say that with a month under our belts, and it's been about a month, it's been four full weeks of, of classes, uh, how are things going, how are things not going, what's uh, been impressive, what's not been impressive, and, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah, but I, I think before we, we get into those questions, it'll be um, remiss of us if we don't talk about the big event this past weekend um, that was all over the news. Oh, um, sorry, I, I hadn't heard. I <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, well, what are your thoughts on uh, Homecoming or FOCO or whatever they call it? Yeah, days? so, <laughs> does FOCO mean fake Homecoming? Yeah. <laughs> like F-H-O-C-O? F-O-C-O. That's what the students that. call it, apparently. Yeah, so. FOCO FOMO or something. I, <laughs> I um, Well, I have nothing wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong, Vince, with a small gathering between intimate friends. Yeah. So exactly. that's, that's what it was, right? It yeah, was just... if, if, if you mean small by 5,000 students, then yes, uh, all over the streets, then that's fine. Sounds good. I saw pictures and a couple of, um, like, you know, Twitter videos or whatever. I don't have Twitter, but I, I just read an article where it had some embedded, like, videos. And, um, yeah, I think it was spectacularly stupid. <laughs> like, truly, truly incredible. I think it looked like a hell of a good time, though. So, I, uh, what do you want me to? What do you want me to say? Obviously, I do not condone this behavior, but um, I think that the the pandemic and people being locked up in their house for twenty months or, or whatever it's been has has caused them to forget uh, certain or not not to forget, but to make it easy to forget certain social norms. Because even an, an event like that, even without the pandemic, yeah. is is inappropriate. It's dangerous. There were things that happened the last time they did this where, you know, a girl got ran over by a horse, I'm pretty sure. Like back where in the did the horse come from? <laughs> it was a police horse. That's the irony. <laughs> but they were like trying to control the crowd. And, and yeah, so I don't know. I it, it's 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 insane. It's the biggest one I think they've ever had. I, it just I, continues I, to I grow so, every yeah. year. And, and it was all over the place, right? Like this one was like down Ainsley, like... Um, Back, like, close to where you used to well, live. Well, like... I'm glad you brought that up, because uh, the one picture on the CBC article that they have of everybody there, where you can see, like, that throng of people, it looks like they're about to invade Troy, <laughs> is actually just the, the houses that you can see in that picture are across the road from my old house. <laughs> so, like, I recognize those houses. I looked yeah. at them for, well, I moved in in 2007. And I moved out in 2019 from that house. So for 12 years, I looked at those houses. And that means that 
that was right where I used to <laughs> yeah. live. And man, did I dodge a bullet there. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, I don't know w- when this started. Like, I mean, in when I was an undergrad, the, this was never a thing. Like, homecoming was never really a thing. Like, there was no parties ever. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, when you were, like, you no, were just like a couple exact, of years, exact right? Exact same. So. I, I remember playing a, an intramural ultimate frisbee game uh, where some of my teammates, not me distinctly, by the way, were under the influence because they had just come from the football game yeah. and their finals for ultimate frisbee were on, like, the, the Saturday or whatever. Um but like yeah, that that like, aside from the actual game and a few house parties, there was nothing yeah. going on, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I don't I think it started, for me I started to notice it for sure in 2018. So in 2018 yeah. I was still living uh, on Gary Avenue, represent mm-hmm. Gary Avenue, um, and they I guess Dalewood Dalewood was became, the street yeah. became this street like so Dalewood is one street west of of Gary. Uh, excuse me, one street east of Gary, my mistake. And like, I, I don't know what happened. Like one one day we just kind of like woke up and there was just hundreds of people, and only hundreds of people, yeah. not thousands, thousands of people. Yeah. And it was this big street party. And you know, like I'm f- honestly I'm fine with that. Like I don't care. People can have a street party at the time, right? There was no COVID. There was no any like you know what? As long as you're safe or whatever, you know, don't drink on the street. Don't don't block traffic. And funny story, I. Um, on that day, let's just say it was like the, it's like last week of September or whatever, um, we had an appointment at the mill, the Ancaster Mill, yeah. for the final details for our wedding, which was the next Saturday, yeah. uh, which is, um, or actually it was Friday, it was the Friday before Thanksgiving, October the 5th, happy anniversary, Laura. Um, so, so we went to go, and we had an appointment in like half an hour, it's only like a 10 minute drive to the mill, and I couldn't get out of the driveway because there was just so many people so i'd like i just pulled out tried to pull out of my driveway and there's all these people but at least they got out of they did get out of the way like i i just kind of gave them a thumbs up and they all like you know applauded or whatever as as people in good spirits do they didn't flip, flip my car, car like they did <laughs> yesterday like what the heck yeah sorry yeah and, and and i think it's a, it's a it's it's a thing that's spread throughout at least Ontario universities now. Like, like I know students that go to like Western and Queens and whatnot, and probably half the students that were partying were not from Mac. Right? Yeah. Like it's just, it's yeah. just a phenomenon now, right? Like, yeah, I don't know if it's just, you know, you see all these benders in the United States yeah. and people just want to be cool like that, or like somebody realized that like, hey. This is our chance to goof off, you know. It's kind of like a, a few reserved days of the year, yeah. right, where you get to act like an like a complete moron and nobody cares, right? So, because it's expected, or well, yeah. So uh, St. Patrick's Day yeah. is another example yeah. of a day where you can act like a complete moron, but that's just kind of like what people do, yeah. right? Homecoming is another one of those like yeah. days, you know, and and they're pretty rare. Like you wouldn't say like any normal holiday is one of those days because usually they're grounded in some type of historical thing, but but. Not that St. Patrick's Day isn't, but I mean, obviously, you know, the, the context there is different. So, but anyway, it was quite something. I'm glad I don't live there anymore. <laughs> I was actually away this weekend. I was up at my, my parents' my parents' cottage enjoying the rain, nice. as you do. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Anyway, to those of you that were at homecoming, uh, I hope that you were safe. Yeah. You know, I just hope party you responsibly, fun. right? Like, and, um, and I hope that you don't come down with... Uh, with the Kovskis. Yeah. Know? We don't need that. Holy moly. Yeah, I, I think some schools ask students that join the festi- festivities to stay home for a couple of weeks, right? I mean, like, it's only one week and then it's reading week, right? But mm. that's, a, that's a terrific segue to talk about what, what has worked well for us in yeah. the classroom. Because now people have an additional reason to stay home. It's not like they couldn't have stayed home already because everything is being offered uh, either online or in hybrid, yeah. as you know. But, but let's talk a little bit about our... Our back to school experience. Yeah. I feel like I've been rambling a bit, so I'm actually going to let you go first here, Vince. For sure. um, what is the thing that has worked the best for you, or that you've enjoyed about being back to school? Uh, you're you're kind of back in person. You're here with me right now. Uh, and what has not been so good about being back to school, either in person or online yeah. or whatever? So, so I think the obvious one, like so, just to give a little bit of context. I'm teaching only one course this this term. I'll teach. Uh, three courses next term. Um, the course I'm teaching right now has a has a lab component, and so you know I, I teach the lectures online, uh, and then I, I go into the labs. Um, what what 
you know what worked well or, or what what's, what's uh, what have I been really enjoying is um, just being there and seeing students right like like just before this I was in, in a lab mm-hmm. just you know seeing talking to students um, like you know uh, like c- last week we were we were running some macros on Excel and then like, we got the macros to work you know troubleshooted some uh, VBA code, uh, yeah. good old VBA code. What's, and, what's and, it like to have somebody <laughs> actually do that correctly and then get excited about ex- exactly. it? Exactly. I've never, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like they were really struggling. They're like, "Well, what is this thing?" And then, and then we got it to work. And then, like, people were clapping. And I was like, "Oh, it's 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 nice to hear real applause than you know, like, you know, fake virtual applause." And I mean, I've heard neither. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but that that was fun. And and then it's just like you know, like. I don't. I don't think I realized the how much I miss kind of just the banter and just like the 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 nonverbal communication, like you know, being able to like peek over someone's laptop and just like see like the, their their process and things like that. Um, I truly enjoy, right? Like, like mm-hmm. so. So I think the labs and the tutorials is 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 a great experience. Um, I, I haven't taught um, in person in in terms of lectures, so I'll, I'll let you talk about that uh, a little bit later. Um, and what I also find um, really useful right now is um, the hybrid um, meeting. So like all the meetings are still online, and, and mm. like for me that that works quite well. Um, you know, I, I could like literally I'll drive in, um, do the labs, and I'll, I'll drive home, do do a v- virtual meeting, and then go pick up the kids. So so yeah. um, much more flexible uh, in, in in those ways, right? So um, so I, I really think that that's kind of the 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 moving forward, like what, what's what's work going to be looking like for us? That that there's going to be this hybrid thing. The, the only thing is that um, they kind of expect you to be there all the time if we have these like virtual meetings, right? So it's yeah. it's just um, kind of the drawback there. Um, but yeah, overall, like being there in person, seeing the students, um, that, that's the highlight. Um, and you were saying, you know, well, what's one thing that's like I really don't like? It's uh, COVID related. Um, so like I said, I have a lab. And the first week of lab, um, my kids got sick uh, the f- the weekend before, and so um, no, we got we had to go get them tested on a Sunday, um, you know, and then um, turned out they didn't have COVID, but because they didn't have COVID, then I got it, and, and I had you know, a cough and a fever, so like that week I had to you know call uh, shout out to to Mike, my my lab technician, like he had to go in and open the, the lab and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like so so like little things like that, like you know, being exposed and like. You know, sometimes like I in the morning I just wake up with a cough, right? Like it's like that dry like oh, throat, yeah. and you're like, oh, it's like, that time of year. Is, is is it like is it bad enough that I have to like you know go on my math check and be like, yeah, I have symptoms? Like you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. things like that, right? Like into that ethical <laughs> dilemma where you're like, I'm pretty sure I'm fine, but if I'm not fine, man, I'm gonna look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So so. So yeah, just the, the first week, what were like? Oh, there are students in in the lab, but then like I have to zoom in. Like thankfully for my TAs that they figure out you know how to work text and 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 you know we have screens up and then they could just project teams and whatnot. But like you know th- that constant concern is like I don't want my kids to get sick so that I don't like miss out on 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 in person things, especially like you know with my with my course after reading we there's gonna be some wet labs. It's like oh like I really need to be there to to, to demonstrate some of the stuff there, but. You know, it is what it is now. Like, you know, my kids, if they have something like, you know, a slight cough, they can't go to school. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we got to figure out, you know, child care yeah. and all that stuff. So so, so that's the, the biggest kind of like, oh, like, I, I don't know how to navigate this kind of stuff. But overall, it has been a, a pretty good experience. Um, I think that the students, at least uh, for my third year students, have been relatively engaged. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you could talk about your difference between second and fourth year students, right? Like, yeah, yeah so. so I guess just to... To go off of what you said at the at the very end there, just relatably, I went to the Blue Jays game on, uh, speaking of which, RIP Blue Jays. Yeah. That's, that's a tough one. Uh, we're not going to get into that maybe right now because it's still too fresh, but ouch. Um, but I went to the Blue Jays game the Saturday before school started, so the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. And, um, and it, was, it was good, and I had a good time, and, and then we came home, and, and I went to school on the Tuesday in person, the first day of school. I had 4 N 4 which I'll talk about in a, in a second. So we had an in-person class. I had like 19 people show up, so appreciate those people that came out. Uh, and then I went home on Tuesday um, and just started to feel kind of a little tired and like, you know, a scratchy throat. And I was like, Ugh. 
man, I, I hope it's just the fact that I just yelled at people for an hour, right? For the first time in a Two long years, time, yeah. you know? And, um, and so I had to project and I'm just not used to it and I'm just gassed. And then I woke up in the middle of the night on Tuesday and I felt like garbage. You know, I, I didn't have a fever, but I had a really sore throat and I was like, oh no. So of course I went to get tested. I went early on Wednesday morning, but because I wasn't feeling well, I did not go to school. And therefore I got totally screwed because I missed my first 2E04 in-person class, um, mm. which I was really looking forward to. And it's a good way for me to kind of establish the hype, I guess. I like the, the first class is important to me. And we still had a really good first class, but it was online and it wasn't quite the same, right? Yeah. Like um, you don't get to, to show your excitement physically when you're in an online class. You can try, but it doesn't work. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would relate that, that the things that have not worked for me are, are when people aren't feeling well, like the default to just stay home, like the, the ambiguity or the uncertainty in my head is just like, because sometimes you do just get a dry throat. And I'm just like, and I start to think about it. And like sometimes, you know, Laura's got a scratchy throat or something and I start to think about it. And, you know, it's been a bother. And then to extend that a little bit further in terms of things that have been annoying is like my own expectations. I've tried to keep them level. And I've tried to keep them like fair, um, but it still hurts my feelings when you're doing in-person classes and people don't come, mm -hmm. right? And like, and I do not, under any circumstances, blame anybody that chooses to not come. I don't, I don't really care. Like, as long as you get the education and you consume the content in whatever way works for you, that's great. And that's why we record classes and whatever. But it's still like, man, I just really want people to be as excited about being there for real as, as I am, right? And, and they're not. I mean, like some people are, obviously. And, and I appreciate those people for coming out. It's been good. Um, the second year class has been, has been pretty good. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to streamline this into what, what I've liked. I have liked doing the in-person class mm. with the people that are there. Um, it comes with, some, comes with some catches, right? Yeah. So I've really enjoyed, say, 2E04. I probably get about half the students there, which is amazing. And honestly, probably about as good or better than I would get any other year. So yeah, Probably better so, than pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I, I, if you can't make fun of yourself, Vince, then... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but the people that are there, um, they're a little shy, and that's fine. It's their first... It's their... Like, if you're in second year, it's your first, you know, university class. And... If I understand correctly, it's the only second year class in our department that's being offered in person mm. that doesn't have like maybe, for example, 2D04, I think it's running optional in-person tutorials, yep. but none of the lectures are in person. And so it's hard to get them to like engage. Sometimes I'll say a terrible joke and I'll get like a smattering of polite laughter, uh, which, <laughs> is, which is nice. So I appreciate that. But, um, but it really does make a difference for me. Um, the thing that I'm worried about is that I don't want the people that are in the online class to feel like I've forgotten about them. So I do like to try to check. I tried checking the chat on my phone for the first like week or so, like having the chat on my phone, but it wasn't that active yeah. and it got, it just died pretty quickly. Um, and it just kills my phone battery. So I've been flipping back and forth while projecting my screen. But the reality is I don't have my online setup. The thing needs to be portable. I need I only have like one screen that I need to duplicate to show it on the projectors. Yeah. And so I don't have that versatility. And what, what pains me is that like last year, the 2E04 class, now your third year class, was very, very active in the chat. Yeah. And I've been like very proud of the fact that like at the end of 2E04 last year, there were over 5,200 comments in the chat thread for 2E04. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. And like 90% of them were off topic, right? <laughs> but that's okay because like I can filter through that and it feels good. This year, that is the exact opposite, right? Yeah. And I just want the people, if you're listening, the people that are not there in person to realize that like I still really do care and I do want you to be engaged. It's just, it's, it's a lot harder for me because I also have to direct my attention to the people that are in person and I don't care for them any more or less. Everybody is equal, but like it's hard to divide my attention. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a challenge. 4N, uh, just to quickly wrap up, has been really good. Actually, the attendance overall in 4N has been excellent. Uh, the attendance in person has been low, but consistent. And it's the same people that, that want to be there. And that's great because, you know, what we've done is we've moved out of the big cavernous lecture hall once we realized that we were going to stabilize at like 10 to 12 people, um, which is not a big number, but it's definitely enough for me to keep doing it because it's more fun for me that way. Um, 
everybody's still there live online, which is nice. But we booked one of the tutorial rooms in the BSB basement, like just down the hall from here, which is like, you know, it's only like a 35 person room. So like we only have like 12 people there so we can still spread out and I can kind of set up sitting down at a desk with people like close by. I don't need to like yell. It's not as like impersonal. People aren't like sitting close to the back or whatever. Everybody that's there is kind of just now we're just this little small yeah. tutorial class, right? And also because I can go to the desk, I can actually, and there's a TV screen at the back of the wall that they've installed that's new. I can actually, instead of duplicating my screen, I can actually have the slides on a separate, like an extended display, yeah. which I can see on the back wall, which is projected, and then I can have the chat That's and nice. like stuff on my laptop screen, which actually has brought back my ability to try to engage, right? And there's a few people with their cameras on, and I really appreciate that. So, so anyway, things have been things have been fine. You know, it's yeah. it's it's been it's been okay. So, um, how do you think things are going on the student side? Um, from, from, I mean, we'll, we'll talk to some students a little bit later, right? But, yeah. um, like from, from what I gather, I, 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 at least the students that I've spoken with, and, and I think that's a kind of a biased, you know, sampling, um, Obviously. The, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the, the people that come out to, to the in-person, I think they appreciate it. Um, and, um, I, I think they're so, Absolutely. I, I, I think they're adjusting, right? Like uh, literally I've seen students, you know, going to design studio, like now talking to some iBios and then like they have to pop out and like go straight into a lecture, like just on, on a table outside and, and, you know, sit there for a couple of hours for, mm -hmm. for, for uh, a virtual lecture and whatnot. Right. So I, I think that is the adjust adjustment, but I think uh, the students, at least that I've spoken to, um, they, they have appreciated the, the in-person, um, elements um that they, they completely hate asynchronous um, mm -hmm. stuff um, i have found and, that too and it's just i i think this year more than last year um just because now they have to juggle three things right like like live virtual lectures or and then and then in-person things and then now like figure out when to do the asynchronous things mm -hmm. um but i think overall like the, the, the students i've spoken with the, the, they they have um enjoyed being back especially just like not, not just like the lecture stuff and, and, and the school stuff but like having friends in their houses and, and things like that and i oh, think that's yeah. the biggest piece oh, right yeah. like like actually people partying like like you know foco or whatnot but you know as as bad as it was yes yeah. you you kind of understand a yeah, little exactly bit, right you empathize yeah. a little bit um, yeah, I, t I totally agree. I think the people that are here, I, it, you're right, it is extremely biased because it's very easy to say that the people that are here seem to be enjoying being here. Yeah. But of course, when presented with the opportunity to do what you prefer, obviously the people that are here are enjoying being here. But that doesn't take away from the, from the fact that it does improve the attitude of, of you or me, like yeah. the, I'm speaking for myself, like improve my kind of like overall feeling about all, everything that's going on right and that feeling got better last year in an online environment as you kind of got used to it I was like ah oh, I I'm I've gone on record for saying that last year was not good but it was miles better than expected yeah. right you expected a like a, a garbage fire but it was just kind of like you know garbage that had been sitting in the sun for a few hours you know <laughs> it's like kind of bad but not yeah. not the same um, but yeah I, I think that the students are, are adapting admirably yeah. some better than others and that's to be expected um, I'm not sure how the workload management thing is going to go this year relative to others I can't imagine it'll be too too much different um, we're still obviously doing testing and stuff online slash so a lot of courses have gone with mm -hmm. more of a project-based approach yeah. and um, so like my 4n grading scheme has largely been the same since the dawn of time and by that I mean 2015 it's like, you know, like it, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work, uh, but you know, at least the assignments are like, none of them are particularly hard. It's just a lot yeah. to do, right? And, and I empathize with the fact that a lot of other courses, electives especially in fourth year and whatever, have gone with a more long-term assessment-based approach, which has really sucked up a lot of time. You don't appreciate the efficiency of a 30% Exam, exam or a, yeah. a fifty percent exam until now and, you have like until project you, until you <laughs> have to do like a weekly assignment worth five yeah. percent instead, right? So instead of yeah. cramming for a week, you have to do twelve assignments, and it's just yeah. like ouch, you know. 
Um, so I think that, that that's something that the faculty side has tried to talk yeah. to each other and tried to calibrate a bit. Um, I have received no complaints in second year, and I have received no complaints personally about about the overall workload or my workload mm -hmm. in fourth year either. Um, and ironically, I think the the third year workload is, is well, it's always the highest. It's always right? been, right? Like for, yeah. for our, or at least our program, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So so anyway, I, I think that, that that requires constant, you know, balancing, you know, taking, yeah. taking a few coins off the scale and moving them around just to try to keep things manageable. But, you know. Yeah. And and I, th I think like I I, re I would really like to have some pulse on how the virtual pieces, um, like how the virtual students are experiencing, especially especially for courses where where you're doing like a hybrid lecture and whatnot. Like for me, like when I was in the lab, like it's it's so hard to convey like what's happening in in the room to the to the virtual people and vice versa. And it's just like the experience is exactly the same, right? It's just like that silence right yeah, like in, yeah. in, in the virtual room and like i try to repeat the questions that students have sure in, like but it's just like not the same right like it's um yeah and and you know like you said no dual screen it, it switching back and forth it, it's hard but yeah like it, it's it's been it's been to me much better than, than expected mm -hmm. um and to, just kind of to tell a little story like last last friday i i was done my my lab i hop on a on a bus um, and I bumped into uh, a, like literally like three other ChemEng students. One, uh, Alex McKay, grad student. Nice. Uh, Sam Usas, you know, a fourth year student, and, and then and then Maya from iBio. Um, and and we're just sitting and chatting, and, and and like those are the things that like you know would never happen on the bus. Like on the bus, on the we're bus. just okay, yeah. sitting and chatting, and, and and like those are the kind of the you know moments that I kind of miss, where it's like oh like you know like you know, these students would, would never have, have the chance if, yeah. if we were still virtual, right? So, and, and you know, what we're talking about project, that, that this is w what triggered my, my thought. Like, you know, like they're saying, you know, in fourth year and fifth year, like everything is projects. Yeah. Like, you know, they have six classes, six projects. And, yeah. and, and, and that's where I, I think they feel the the burden is like, or, or, or just like the, the grind, where it's like, oh, like there's, group meetings after group meetings after oh, group yeah. meetings right and, and and especially with the virtual piece it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's worse right so yeah. um and and you you can imagine like you know some group meetings just like screens off people are muted and then like you know just one person like speaks into the speaks into the abyss right it's like yeah and yeah. and if if that's the, your experience then then it is what it is yeah, and and so I've had a few group meetings that are like that. I guess I can I can relate to how nice it is to just see people. I mean, meet the profs was fun. Yeah, there's, that was there good. Was, there's like maybe thirty students total, like kind of filtered cute, in and right? out. But like it still means a lot, yeah. right? That they yeah. that you're there. Um, like shout out to those students. I mean, usually people come because of the free pizza, but you know, like, well, there there were there were free uh, like uh, <laughs> yeah. cookies and stuff. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. But but yeah, no, it's it's great, and and it was nice to. Like it's so, you know, it's so sad that like somebody sits down, and I'm just like, hey, do I know you? Like I just, you just gotta own it. Yeah. Like, do I know you? And they're like, oh, you know, my name is such and such. I, you know, I took two e four last year. Yeah. I'm just like, see, like there you go. Like I don't know no. what a lot of these people look like, you know, yeah. and, and I don't know what they sound like. And, and it's hard uh, with the math as well, right? Exactly. So it's like, oh, yeah. okay. The number of times I've I've run into to people that I've never seen in person. But maybe you see them with their camera on or yeah. something once or twice, but then they have the mask on and I just don't, it just makes you feel yeah. kind of dumb, right? But um, no, that's that's been good. Some of the four end like meetings have been pretty dead. I think mostly because people are just doing their own thing and like working on, on what they have to work on. But some of the four end meetings are pretty lively. Um, and, and just something that I didn't mention quickly is like the in-person labs for, for 2E. The attendance has kind of, stabilized it like half in person half online the ta does the online lesson and then you can go into breakout room there or you can do the activity in the real room with me and i can't tell you how much i've appreciated just the people that show up in person because like that's where you get the eureka moment right yeah, like you exactly last year in all of 2e4 4g3 4h3 and ibehs 4ao3 all of which contain matlab and or python and or gams it's some sort of 
scripting language, yep. I did not get the Eureka moment a single time. Because yep. people figure it out either on their own or like on the call, but you don't see yep. the light bulb, you know? Like you don't see the eyes brighten up when when it works, yep. you know? And, and that has been really nice, you know? Even though it's not everybody, and I know that, and some people struggle, it's like when it happens, especially to somebody that's been struggling or working hard, when you get that that feeling that's like the most fulfilling thing. Yeah, and I think that that's the piece that students don't really understand or, or get like that, like as educators, like that that's kind of the, the thing that drives us, yeah. that energizes us, right? The words like, like these students have been struggling and be like, boom, like that, that moment, you know, figuring out what, you know, how, it's how the, to- uh, you know. It's the equivalent to the good golf shot, right? It's the good golf, it's like that, it's the, the addictive feeling of, yeah. of euphoria or success, right? Where you've been struggling or you try and you, you every once in a while, you just get that one wonderful kind of moment and yeah. you're just like, beautiful, you know, yeah. feels good. Anyway, well, this is, this is good. This is a good, good chat. Um, do you have any other stories that you want to tell or? No, do, do, you, do you have any stories? I don't think so. I, you know, I've had, I've had positive Experiences. I think it's really funny that um, in the lab for 2E4, two days a week we have lab 11.30 to 1.30, and then we have lecture at 1.30, and lecture is in the basement of ITB, which is across campus. So as we're packing up, my, um, my coping mechanism or my defensive mechanism is to just say it's time for that awkward walk across campus where we pretend to not know who each other are now. <laughs> kind of like the opposite of what you're saying when yeah. you see people on the bus and they yeah. want to talk to you. So yeah. I'm just like, yeah. So now we'll just like... You know, I'll just like follow like 30 feet behind or something, you know. But no, I, I'm just kidding. There have been a lot of people that have, you know, spoken to me and, and it's been like a nice, it's been just been nice to, to chat to people going across campus. Because exactly, that's that camaraderie right. that you just don't have, right? Yeah. It's the complaining to your friend that, you know, that test was bullshit. <laughs> you know, like wh- where is it, where's that been? Everybody feels like they're on an island. Everybody yeah. feels like they had, like they're the only one that didn't understand a single word that came out of my mouth during lecture. And yeah. like... Uh, newsflash, you're not, yeah, right? Exactly, so, yeah. Um, it's nice to just know, to get that validation with somebody else that, that feels the same way as you, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so what we are going to do next, right, is we are actually going to have a guest panel of some students on. Uh, we're trying to draw people from each of the different levels, so we're excited to talk to them about their experiences coming back. So we'll have a, a little panel as our guest. And then we are going to come back and uh, our tier list for this episode is going to be learning tools in 2021. So all the different like things that you might encounter and whether or not we uh, we like them or not, essentially, right? So, yeah. and we'll get the student panel to rate some of these things as well. So, um, shall we take a quick break? And come yeah, back? let's take a break. All right, thank you. All right, and welcome back, everybody, to the Heat Exchanger podcast. We are very excited to be joined by a group of current students across different levels and in different programs in our department uh, to tell us a little bit about their experience returning to McMaster. So uh, instead of me introducing them, I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. We have a panel of five students with us here today. Uh, Annika, please go ahead. All right. Hello, listeners. My name is Annika Yardi, and I'm in my sixth year of chemical and bioengineering. Uh, I guess a little bit about myself. I am in my sixth year because I've been on a lot of co-ops. So I came back from a co-op at Sanofi Pasteur, worked at Rapid Dose Therapeutics and did two research stints in Showdown and taught Hors Labs. And that's it for me. Um, Yeah, I will pass it on to Kira. Thanks, Annika. Hi, everyone. My name is Kira. I am in my fifth the year of chemical engineering and the iBiomed program. Um, I have also had many co-op terms, just like Annika, um, notably Labatt's, Linamar Automotive, and HTS. I am also currently a part of the women's varsity lacrosse team, and I am attempting to start up the brewery club this year. And I think I'm going to pass it on to Landon. Hello, everybody. Uh, My name is Landon. I am in my third year of chemical and bioengineering. I did a co-op last summer at Queen's University as a student researcher, and I am also on the swim team at McMaster. 
Um, I think that's everything for me. I'm going to pass it on to Sinovan. Hi, uh, my name is Siobhan. I'm in my third year of chemical engineering, and I'm in the ChemEng club this year as a third year rep. Uh, and I also did a co-op this summer at Kenna. Hello, everyone. My name is Quinn. I am a second year chemical and bioengineering student, level two, and I currently have not done any co-ops yet. Not yet, but I'm hoping to get one this next coming summer. And I'm a part of the uh, ChemEng club as well, and I'm a second year rep for them. And then I'm also an executive on the uh, McMaster Chem eCar team that is that we are uh, trying to reboot this year. All right, brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for the introductions. We're just going to jump right into some questions. We're we're looking for your honest perspectives on on your experience back at McMaster or not, as the case may be over the last month or, or month and a half or so. Uh, and if you'd like to tell us a little bit about how that is different maybe than, than the year that came before this, if you were at school the year before this, then we would like to hear that too. So um, first question, uh, not everybody needs to answer, but, but whoever's interested in telling us, are you here for in-person classes? Do any of your classes offer only virtual versus maybe a mix of those two things? Are you on campus, you know, sometimes all the time, not at all? Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about how you are going about your education this year. Uh, hey everyone, uh, it's Landon. I am personally doing a hybrid of my courses this year. So some of my courses are offering online components and some of them are offering in-person components. So I'm trying to be as in-person as possible because I really like the aspect of the classroom. I really like the cooperation with other students. And honestly, I find that I learn best when I'm physically there engaging with the prof. Um, as for that, I say that last year uh, was all online for me, and I must say that I am liking the return to campus, and it's coming along pretty well so far. Um, I'm also doing a hybrid uh, class setup, and I'm kind of like picking and choosing like the best parts of in-person and um, online. Like for in-person classes, it's a lot more like motivating and the classes are a lot more engaging and it's easier to pay attention. But then I also really like the convenience of like having recorded lectures because then you can kind of make your own schedule sometimes. So, and then I also like the social aspect of like in person. Hello everyone, this is Quinn here and uh, I'm doing it the hybrid method. So I'm doing some of my classes online and some of them in person. A lot of my classes are being recorded, but Jake's class actually is uh, one of my in-person classes, which has been great so far. So that's uh, that's pretty good. And the tutorials are always fun and exciting. First one, there's a fire alarm that went off, and uh, wasn't it was it was all right because there's always the other meetings that you can watch the recordings for too. So that's like a benefit to this online learning. And um, yeah, it's it's been a big change from last year for sure because last year was my first year in university and I had it uh, fully online, which was pretty tough considering I was back at my home and it was hard to leave with COVID. But now I'm really excited to be here and uh, be meeting new people and um, making new experiences. I'll just uh, jump in quickly to to first of all sympathize a little bit with the whole first year online thing, especially with the new integrated project courses, which were literally designed for, you know, in-person design studios and that sort of thing. So that was unfortunate. I will also uh, remind you, Quinn, that that fire alarm was not in our building. That fire alarm was in the TA's building who was actually delivering a lesson from Saskatchewan. So that was a Saskatchewan fire alarm that we heard uh, super exotic. It uh, sounded really cool. So I mean, online learning at its best, right? That somehow you're affected by a fire that's miles away <laughs> or a fake fire, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, that that's a great um, segue, Quinn, to the our next question. And next question is, um, how are you all adjusting to the school year this year? Uh, I mean, Quinn just talked about how um, for him first year was all virtual um, for, for some of you. Uh, 
you know, Siobhan and, and, and Landon, you, you were there for the virtual classes uh, in, in your second year. You were there in person the, the, the year before. And then for Kira and Annika, you, you, you guys were um, in co-op uh, during the, the COVID, COVID year. Uh, how, how are you all adjusting to school uh, this year? Hey, this is Kira. Um, like Vince said, I was on co-op last year and that was pretty strategic. I kind of heard that school was going to be online and immediately was like, absolutely not. I will see you in a year. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we would go back to full in person. I think hybrid is kind of the next best thing we could have hoped for. I did take a couple courses uh, while on co-op, which we're again completely online. So I do sympathize with the students who were completely. Um, as of my adjustment back to school, it's been difficult, but also I'm significantly happier now that we're back on campus. I can say that my mental health is definitely way better being able to collaborate in person, being able to connect with profs and students in person instead of virtually. So I really enjoy that aspect. And then again, clubs and teams being in person again, that's been a huge part of my university experience back pre-COVID. So again, I'm really happy that we're kind of starting to see a new normalcy, at least with sports and clubs and teams. All right. And this is Annika here. Similar to Kira, I came back from a year of co-op, so completely avoided most of that virtual school. So coming back has been an experience, not just adjusting to virtual school, but to school period. Uh, so that's been a fun adventure. One of the really nice things I found so far coming back to the school year and the benefit of it being hybrid is I've been able to keep some of my uh, commitments that I started during my co-op year. So I'm involved with an Engineers with the Borders group that's based in several different universities. And so because we set up this structure while we were in hybrid mode and we got used to communicating over Zoom, going back to now where we're uh, more in person, we're still able to keep that commitment going. So um, one of the perks to a more hybrid school system is you can connect with people in other extracurriculars from other universities. Just want to mention, uh, jump in and, and say to Kira, especially regarding uh, sports and activities being back in person, you know what I did today for the first time since February 2020 was play squash. And um, I am in a great deal of pain right now. So that's good. The recovery to sports has been very rough. My endurance is absolute garbage. I oh yeah, oh yeah. It feels <laughs> it. I would say feels good, but I mean the opposite. So, I must ask Jake, uh, did you squash the competition when you played today? I I absolutely did. Thank you, Landon, for for checking in. The opponent was none other than uh, Nikesh Patel. Shout out to Nikesh, one of Dr. Maskar's students, uh, who has taught three KO four in the past, and. Um, uh, let's just say that my finely honed edge wore off slower than his, so I was able to uh, to put the squish in on. Okay, so everybody has spoken a little bit about kind of where they're at and, and what they're choosing to do and, and what has been nice about returning to campus or, or what has been nice about the flexibility even of, of not returning to campus in some, in some instances. And our next question kind of just goes on with, with what you think has worked the best. So what in particular uh, has been an experience or a class setup maybe that has worked very well for you? Uh, and then maybe if you alternatively have something else, um, do you can you think of anything that has been particularly challenging or that has not worked well? So let's get some opinions on, on the setup and, and maybe our colleagues can learn a thing or two from, from what the students are appreciating. All right, Annika speaking. Uh, one thing I got to love is Teams. We've got a central file organization system. It's not a messy Google Drive or a bunch of files dropped in a Facebook Messenger chat. Love the infrastructure there. One thing that I must say that is kind of, I didn't expect it anyway, um, as of course, being the younger generation, I found to be very proficient in technology and I never thought that I could get any better. However, the online semester has really taught me some skills and abilities that I never would have developed if it hadn't been put on or if campus hadn't been moved online. Um, one of the examples is Microsoft Teams that and, you know, using Zoom and actually like using various things to communicate with my peers, you know, such as shared documents and even Google Drives. Um, but I must say that it's 
it's become easier almost and it's made me a more efficient worker. Now that we've had a couple of instances of things that have gone well, I am going to come in and talk about how things aren't going well. So one criticism that I do have is that it is extremely difficult to run labs and tutorials in a hybrid environment. It is hard to collaborate with two people in person and two people online trying to set up a Teams call with the two people that are right in front of you and then the two people that are hundreds of miles away, perhaps. It doesn't always go very well. It, it can be hard to collaborate. And especially if in your, you're in a lab, for example, I have an electronics lab this semester, and it's really hard for that online person to help you see the electronics board and tell you where to plug in wires, where to plug in resistors. So I would say that is definitely a challenge. Um, adding on to that, to what um, Kira said, yeah, sometimes like taking um, labs and tutorials where you have to collaborate is definitely a lot harder online because obviously when you're in person, you're more inclined to like talk to the people next to you and collaborate with them. And then online, um, the TAs and like the profs focus is, is on in person. So it's a little bit harder to um, like ask questions and really like grasp like what's happening. Uh, I just wanted to add on to maybe a positive thing, and this isn't just to like completely gas up you guys as profs, but so far I've found uh, the teaching styles very well. You guys have taken your time, and um, Jake, I know you even have like stop signs in your some of your uh, lectures to, for people to ask questions, which I find like helpful if we do need it. And then as well as the other profs that I've had so far have uh, really been good with like taking their time and making sure they get all the questions asked before like moving on to the next topic and yeah I've just found that to be very helpful. Now I can't uh, even if I wanted to which I do want to take credit for that uh, that was not my idea that was the idea of none other than uh, fellow panelist Annika Yardi. Annika uh, gets full credit for the idea of, of putting the stop signs in uh, probably because she took this course with me and she knows that I have a very bad habit of kind of streaking off into the ether uh, with reckless abandon. So thank you, Annika. I'm glad to hear you appreciate the stop signs, Quinn. There were some there before I so, um, improved. There were some stop signs there before I got involved, but there no, are now no, no. more you stop signs. You were about signs. to say before you improved the modules and I'm just gonna like that you can just own that that's fine you're allowed to do that we're, we're all friends here so. and before I pass off the baton I also wanted to say shout out to Jake I'm not taking any of Vince's courses so I don't know how your structure is set up this year but Jake has been running hybrid courses and like got a funny ear piercing speaking virtually and in person and gotta love it so thanks Jake getting gassed up here I, I get gassed up for, for, for everything. This is, this is wonderful. Everybody's so nice and everybody's uh, so we're recording this for our listeners in case it wasn't painfully obvious. We're recording this online and uh, the number of like raise hand function windows that just shuffled on my screen was like nauseating. So God. Um, so I just want to add again that all, all the comments profs that I've talked to um, this year, as well as like, last year have all been really helpful and accommodating and that really helped like make our our classes experience a lot better um so yeah that's we i really appreciate that and the comments faculty I support this message, of course. Uh, you guys have been doing an amazing job. Uh, I've had both Jake and Vince uh, in these past years, and you guys did a great job with the online format. Um, to add to the train of the experiences that have been challenging, uh, here's a hefty one, and I'm not sure how deeply we want to dive into this, but uh, to touch on it a bit, um, mental well-being and mental health with the online semester, I got to say it's it's been interesting, you know, uh, certainly a shift from being in person and having that aspect. Um, but I know that I was almost afraid going into this year. This year, um, 
because I spent my entire semester last year basically in this room, right? The room that I'm currently sitting in, right? And going back home for the summer and then having to come back, it's almost like returning to a prison cell almost, right? Um, but I must say that this year has been a lot better and uh, it took about a day and I felt good about being back on campus and being back in Hamilton again. And we definitely have the props to thank for that. So thank you guys. You know, I just, first of all, we need to rename this podcast to the to the inflationary podcast with Jake and Vince, where we loosely talk about economics, but mostly just about ourselves. Uh, so, so thanks for that. Um, but no, I, I do have to say, just to relate to that, from a, from a personal note, um, two sides of things. First of all, the profs know that it sucks, right? And for the record, it it's no better for us, right? Like all of our meetings are are online. And if you think that I go to in-person meetings just for the lousy paradise catering cookies and coffee, then this is false, right? Like you, you get a lot out of seeing people and, and like being able to talk to them. And then also you get a lot out of, of seeing the students. Um, I can't tell you how hard it is to teach a class online when nonverbal feedback, like very visual feedback is kind of important to me. Um, and you just, you just don't get it, right? Because maybe you have like two or three people with their cameras on in a class of a hundred, which is much appreciated, don't get me wrong. But is that representative of the 70 people that are asleep? Who am I kidding? Why are there 70 out of a hundred people in my class, right? So, um, but but on the other side, just to land it about being back and, and things honestly not taking that long, for me, the, the, the moment that I thought everything was going to be okay, was when my men's league softball team started again. And like, everybody's like worried that it's gonna be like, oh, everybody's gonna wear masks and it's gonna be so like weird. And we're gonna have to like stand like far apart, like, you know, off the bench and, and whatever. And then I went to play men's league softball and I just played softball. And it was just kind of, you know, there were a few, you know, no handshakes uh, with the other team or, you know, you're supposed to like you know, high fives or whatever. But generally speaking, it was just kind of, how I remembered it. And like, that was like the first moment for me that I kind of settled down a little bit. It was almost like 18 months of like anxiety of just like not having anything like that. And I was afraid it would be different and it wasn't actually. And I think that from my perspective in the class, it's not a whole lot different uh, than I remember. I mean, like I can only see everybody from the eyes up, but other than that, it's, uh, it's, it's mostly the same. So anyway. Uh, just on the fact of transitioning back to normal person activities, I was a residence rep this year for Welcome Week. So Welcome Week 2021, and it was really great to see people in suits and we were interacting with students and the students were, and we were cheering. It was almost, almost back to normal. So very good to hear. Well, speaking of going back to normal, uh, the plan for the university is to go back to fully normal, I guess, still with mask and all that, but still full-time in-person uh, for the winter term. Um, so yeah, do, do any of you have any suggestions that we could learn from or like things that we could maybe keep fr from, from our virtual experience um, and things that you would like to see when we go back to quote unquote normal? Uh, I definitely think that the recorded classes and tutorials are really helpful um, for me and like a lot of other people that I've spoken to just because you can like make your schedule more flexible and or you can like fast forward or go back or like it just makes it a little bit easier just in case you missed something in the live lecture. One thing I hope that universities learn from this whole experience um, and profs in particular um, is that technology is a huge asset to education. We've seen huge progress in like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, different online services that can connect us like never before. We've seen um, ability to share um, on different drives. We've, we've seen Discord. We've seen all these new kind of technologies pop up and they are a great asset to our education. And I think we should continue to use them. But at the end of the day, I don't think that technology can replace in-person learning. And I strongly suggest that profs shy away from completely recorded lectures, 
completely asynchronous courses. I do think that the level of education is better when there is either an in-person component or at least a synchronous component where um, students are actually able to collaborate with each other. Yeah, Kara, I think you completely hit it right on the nail there. Like I was, I was going to say something along the lines of that because I definitely think uh, online learning is, it, there's, it's been a massive, there, have, there are massive assets to it. And, but it definitely doesn't replace like the in-person learning, the seeing people in class, the actually like face-to-face -face interactions. Because I feel like that's also what, you know, keeps us going. It's like, it's motivation, it's seeing other people, for, for instance, seeing somebody else struggle, even though, and like you're struggling, struggling as well. I think like, it's, it's kind of nice to see that because it's like, I'm not the only one, you know? But um, yeah, and I think this is gonna sound kind of cliche, but uh, maybe something to learn from this entire thing from all of COVID is just that we can push through like the bad times and get to, um, you know, back to normal whenever there's an instance that happens like this, so yeah. Sorry, I'm back. I just wanted to add upon something Quinn kind of touched on quickly, um, the sense of community that we feel within the chemical engineering department and within McMaster engineering in general, I feel like that has been somewhat missing because of COVID. For example, I barely know anyone in second or third year. And typically you form those friendships, um, being in person, seeing people in Hatch, seeing people in the CSTR. I had to explain to someone what the CSTR was because they didn't know what it was. It's the chemical engineering lounge. You know, we haven't had that sense of community and uh, kind of the ability to say to like a second year, oh, I've been there, I've been in your shoes, or to say to a third year, yeah, I did thermo too, it sucked, but we got through it type thing. You kind of rely on the support from other chemical engineering students. And I'm really excited to see that again as we transition back to hopefully a full in-person semester. Around the same topic of building community, uh, as we're in this hybrid mode now, we've seen the importance of built spaces. Uh, so a lot of things right now are happening outside where there's not a lot of infrastructure to collaborate and sit around a table. Uh, so I'm looking forward to when we can have the cafes inside the different buildings open up. Um, JHE lobby is dead right now because the cafe is not open. Um, so again, those built spaces indoors, really looking forward to those being fully used. I am curious to know how things are going to go as the weather gets colder. Because like right now, the situation is that people can come to campus and feel comfortable doing this. And a lot of people spend a good portion of their time outside. I have noticed uh, that the attendance across campus, not just in our department, but everybody when it's raining is considerably lower than the attendance when it's bright and sunny. Now, as we move towards the colder weather, it would be interesting to see and this kind of touches on something I wanted to bring up very, very briefly here. I'll try, I'll try to be brief at least. When we're talking about the return to in-person learning and the fact that it is an important step uh, in the education process, but technology is a tool, it's not a crutch, it's not the only thing. Uh, we just need to make sure that, that everybody, students especially that are listening here and, and faculty need to realize that sometimes that freedom of choice to like, you know, oh, I just don't want to go to school today because I'll just watch the, the streamed online thing. That is an unsustainable, at least from my perspective, it's, it's very hard uh, because I think it was already touched on once in the, in the interview so far where, you know, you feel like the prof is focusing more on the in-person than on the people online. And I feel like I'm towing that line every day and I feel bad and I'm trying to make sure that the people online don't forget that I know that they're there. But at the same time, as we, we return to in-person, this whole thing like taking classes from overseas, um, you know, this whole thing like taking classes from the prison that Landon lives in, for example, like it, just because it's more convenient because it's cold outside or it's snowy or whatever, not wanting to go write an in-person exam, these types of things will have to go, right? And it's not, it's not that it's going because it's easier for the faculty, it's going because it's been pedagogically shown to be the better way to learn, especially when it comes to things like labs or experiential courses, right? Um, and so 
it's just something that that as I'm, I'm curious to see if the university sticks to it, right? Sticks to the the winter being back in person, um, and and what the concessions are. Like if if you're going to have everybody back on campus, you have to open JHE lobby, right? You have to do it because there's just going to be too many people to like have all the cafes and all the food places closed except for a couple of specific centralized locations. So, all right. So um, that's. Um, brings us to the end of the of the discussion on on what's working i'll just open up the floor to any other final any any other final comments stories things that anybody wants to share before we move on to the tier list um this is just kind of a side comment but i feel like the university has not really thought about where people are gonna eat and I exactly. think this is kind of a concern because I don't know about y'all, but I can't go for like six hours of class without a little snack or like at least something to eat. And I, I'm just wondering, are we going to have designated eating areas? Because as of right now on campus, I'm pretty sure the only place you're technically supposed to be eating is in the student center or outside. And as we kind of head into the winter, I don't foresee a lot of people wanting to eat their lunch out in the snow. So I am kind of interested to see what the university comes up with. Um, stay tuned. Maybe I'll come back with an update. Yeah, they blocked off the microwaves and thawed, so you can't even heat up your food these days. Truly tragic. I have kind of a unrelated topic, but something that I wanted to mention with things that are working really well that I really did not expect to um, swimming with training. Of course, um, I'm on the swim team, as I said before. And of course, with COVID, we dropped swimming in the McMaster pool because McMaster was closed as university uh, last year. This year, we've been opening back up and it's been great to be kind of on campus and actually in the pool again. Um, but one thing that we really adapted and changed, and I think this is something that students got really good at over COVID is kind of adapting and changing with their current environment that are in. Um, but we would do these Zoom workouts where for an hour every single day at like 5 p.m. after we're all done our classes, we'd hop on a workout and every day we'd design a different workout and it would be someone else's turn and then we'd run through it and someone would play their music, right? And it actually got really, really good for the team because it was not only a team bonding experience, but a way to stay fit. And eventually it turned into a way that we could actually engage students coming to McMaster. Like some people in grade 12, we would have recruiting trips where we'd actually get these kids from BC to come out to our workouts and go through our workouts and even talk about the team with them and their worries for coming to university. That's something that I just wanted to share because I think uh, we're gonna try and keep doing that as we return to a normal. Yeah, I mean, one more thing, speaking of places to eat, literally, I, I think I, we got an email like two days ago about they opened up 68 spaces for eating. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in MDCL, apparently. And then or oh, 104 spaces in Pickle. So so there you go. That's There's great. Like, uh, what's the undergraduate population of the master? Just ask 30, 35,000. Yeah, just asking for a friend. OK, sweet, sweet. I don't know, but, but okay. So that's not fair, Vince. It's 35,000, but like how many of those people eat though? That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Okay. I just, yeah. you know, all right, everybody. So we're going to move on. Vince is going to introduce the, um, the different items that you are going to rank. I'll just introduce the rules here very quickly. So <laughs> Kira is saying that she eats every 15 minutes on the side, by the way, which is, which is incredible. Um, all right. So we all know kind of how a tier list works, right? This is not a visual one, but what we would like to do is introduce a couple of different items. The category for items today is going to be learning tools and learning tools is a bit of a loose collection. It could be online learning tools. It could be physical learning tools. It could be, you know, just learning management, who knows? Uh, so we're gonna give you three items because we go over a few items after this se uh, segment in our own kind of way. Uh, the lowest rating you can give is an F. Uh, and this is a tier list ranking, so you can have an F in this uh, situation. And then uh, from worst to best, F, D, C, B, A. And then there is the S for superb class, if you really uh, feel strongly about something. So I'd like to get everybody's op opinion on each of these, maybe just briefly, about uh, 15 seconds, you know, give it your ranking and then justify it. And then we'll see kind of where we stand. All right, Vince, take us away. Yeah, so uh, the first is a set of three, like, I guess, more engagement tools. So like Kahoot, Mentimeter, and then for the good old 
back in person thing, the eye clickers. Um, yeah, well, what, what are your thoughts on these uh, engagement tools? Monica. I'll, I'll go first, yeah. Uh, so I can give engagement tools a B. I think they're very helpful, especially in person. For <laughs> Landon's bringing out um, a physical eye clicker for those of you not in the call right now. Uh, gotta love it, yeah. B for me. Kira. I'm getting called out here. Um, I'd probably give them a B as well. I also am familiar with the good old eye clicker. Um, but all I remember is being so stressed about getting the right answer. I like didn't even care if I actually learned the information. I was just like, oh crap, like what's the, what's the right answer? What did you guys put type thing? So I don't know if it actually helped me learn a lot, but probably a B. Um, I'd want to say, I'd want to give it an A just because I find them to be quite engaging actually. And it's always like uh, me personally, I'm a competitive person. I know there's a lot of other competitive people that I've been talking to in the program as well. And when it comes to the cahoots, you always want to be like first, second or third, just so you can get your name up there. So I know that makes it a lot more engaging. Um, in terms of the eye clickers and Mentimeter, I think the Mentimeters are always good to like show kind of like a little understanding of like where people are at. So I think it's helpful in that case, but I think Kahoot's definitely the top and then iClicker's second, so. Uh, I personally am a big fan of the iClicker, Mentimeter and Kahoot format that are used in the classes, both online and in person. Uh, one notable thing about the iClickers that I kind of found funny, but maybe not the best for education purposes was people would take um, iClickers, some of them count as participation in the class. Like you actually have to use the iClicker to get participation marks for being in, the, in person in the class. So I had a couple of friends that would say for $2 or a toonie, uh, they take your iClicker to class for you. Right. And by the end of the year, <laughs> you'd see photos of someone's desk and it would just be a pile of like 10, 20 eye clickers. And so it, as I think they're hilarious. I think they're a great way to engage when you use them properly. I'm going to have to agree with Quinn and give them an A or even an S. What an economy, by the way, the eye clicker service economy. Look out. Nobody can afford to buy a house, but they can afford to pay somebody to show up to a class they're already supposed to be at. You love it. Dude, if he got $2 for each eye clicker and there's like 12 weeks, right? And he has 20 eye clickers, that's like 400, like almost $500. He did that in his head, folks. I saw it. Um, oh, I think they're a good way to like stay engaged and like, you know, make sure you're actually paying attention to the lecture. Um, and then sometimes like, sometimes they just highlight like little mistakes that, that uh, people could make on that question. So it can be pretty good, but um, for actually learning something, I don't know if they're really that useful for actually learning. So I'd probably give it like a, a, a or B. All right. What we've learned from this is that students give really easy marks. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> There you go. Um, yeah. So, so the next, the next thing um, that we are, uh, I guess, grading um, in our tier list is Microsoft Teams. We talked a little bit about this. Um, I, I think Annika mentioned it a little bit, but yeah, MS Teams. What are your thoughts? Annika jumped right into it. So, Annika, go ahead. Okay. Um, file storage feature aside. I'm going to give Teams a D because I hate that there's no hide self view thing. And I actually carry around a cart to put in front of myself while I'm in class. So not a fan. I personally really like Teams. I would probably give it an A in terms of the calendar feature, the meeting feature, uh, file storage feature. Um, having all your files for one class in the same spot. And then I will also touch upon it quickly in industry because I did see Microsoft Teams while on co-op and it worked very well in kind of a workplace setting. So I think it's great that we're starting to use it now in university because it's really embarrassing when you have to work with someone and they don't know how to use Microsoft Teams. So I, I do really like Teams and I think it's a great asset um, in university. Um, I used 
teams for my co-op as well. And I just, I really prefer it to um, like even Avenue. I think it can replace like Zoom and Avenue and just have everything in one place. And I really like that. And I like how you can chat with people like at the same time as like doing something else. Um, <laughs> assignment submission. <laughs> I've never, I, yeah, honestly, I think that should be a good idea. I think I would give it an S because I really like it. I must say, I am a big fan of Teams. At the beginning, I was kind of confused why McMaster chose to use Teams, considering there's Discord, Zoom, you know, all sorts of other online platforms that allow video and communication. Uh, however, I have really grown to like Teams. Uh, I think it is a great program for classes and for communicating with peers. One of my favorite features is a file sharing feature that if you drag a file from your computer and just put it in a chat and send it to a friend, suddenly that chat is now saved on the cloud with that person and you can both edit it kind of like a Google Doc. Uh, I'm a big fan of that because I always thought Microsoft kind of lacked that aspect. Um, but that being said, I think I'm going to give Microsoft Teams an S for MS Teams. I'm gonna have to agree with you there, Landon. I'm also gonna give Microsoft Teams an S. So far, first year, that was literally what I used the entire year. Like we, uh, especially for 1P13, which was this uh, really big integrated design course that we had, like sharing files uh, was extremely helpful. Being able to share screens, you can even request to uh, take control of someone's screen. So if you were working on, let's say like a CADing assignment on Autodesk, someone could take control of your screen and actually do it as well. So I found it just to be extremely helpful in that aspect. But yeah, that's why I give it an S. I'll just quickly jump in to, to mention another good feature of taking over someone's screen, MATLAB corrections. Because to, to the point of, I think Kira was mentioning a bit before, the whole thing where it's like, oh, you don't know where to put the the wire into the breadboard to make the circuit in the real lab. If you're like in an online thing and you're trying to communicate with somebody to do a specific thing, the number of times I've been sitting there and just like, no, not that the next line. No, not there. No, not that one, not that bracket. The one to the right of that bracket. Oh my freaking God. So being able to take over someone's screen and just not even do it, just like click on it and say, just do it like there. Like, it's just super nice. They haven't figured out how to let me control a Mac screen, though. It doesn't do cross-platform um, like Mac and, and Windows yet. Hi, I'm back again. I just have a quick criticism of Microsoft Teams because I have to criticize everything. Um, one thing that I get frustrated with is the going from Microsoft Teams to desktop app and then back again and then editing at the same time. I find that sometimes it won't let me edit the same time as other students. Whereas I find that in Google Drive, it's a little bit easier to work on the same document collaboratively at the same time. I don't know if anyone else has had issues with that or maybe it's just my computer, but I always get frustrated with that because sometimes it won't catch up and then stuff gets deleted and moved around. So that can definitely be frustrating when you're trying to write a report with someone. Just gonna jump in and respond to that. Uh, we use Teams at my co-op and it, we didn't have that issue. So I think it's a McMaster server restriction that doesn't let the syncing work properly because it wasn't an issue on my co-op. And secondly, I guess y'all don't have your cameras on because nobody else commented on the hide self view thing for Teams, so. I am going to comment on it right now. What the hell are you talking about? What is, what do you, a hide self view? like? You like, don't see your own camera. Sorry, say again. You don't see your own like camera. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, that's what I. So I thought you meant like it doesn't let me like make my face not appear in a video call, like so that you can just see the background, for example. So that I don't know. Yeah, because I'm like, why don't you just turn off your camera? No, okay, I, that makes that makes a lot more sense. And that is a. It's, it's a good point because I think that everybody has spent 95% of their time on the pandemic uh, doing one of two things, right? Either they've watched themselves on every video call they've ever been in. Don't try to deny it. You know, it's true. Or they've realized that their breath is way worse than they thought. Those are the two things that I think everybody has, uh, has experienced. Okay, Vince, let's move on to the last one. 
Last but not least, uh, the OG teaching tool, the Blackboard and Whiteboard. Uh, what are your thoughts? Blackboard, yeah, no, Whiteboard, yes, because I hate the sound of chalk. I just hate it. It's not a no, yes uh, tier list, so please give us a letter. F and S. <laughs> F and S? Is that what you said? Just no, like I said... What F and S? Like so, F for the blackboard and S for the whiteboard. Yeah, I know that's what I thought I heard. Now that's like the most polarized <laughs> thing. Like, oh man. Yeah. All right, I'll jump in here. This is Annika. Uh, I'm gonna rate them together collectively under the same thing as an S. Uh, shout out to 3P and Dr. Schwartz writing literally everything on the board. That is how I learned. You got to write with me as I take notes. Speaking of Chris, uh, Dr. Chris Schwartz, I think that when it went online, he just took paper and took a video, like camera on top and just like kept writing on paper. I just, so I went to his office. He calls me on the landline and he's like, I need your help. And I was like, okay, sure. I show up at his office. He's got this tripod and he literally had a webcam taped to the bottom of the tripod so that it was facing down. Right. And then he wanted to plug that into his computer, but then also wanted his computer to be plugged into the TV in his office so he could see the chat. And we like, we had to go through this like whole thing so that he could have, he had to, okay. Did anybody take that class? Like the, the, this is the 2020 three PO four. Right. Okay. So Annika, you did take it. Yeah. Uh, once COVID hit, he did a couple lectures like this. So, right. So, so this is like, he had the camera app of his computer on full screen with the camera as the webcam shared that screen over zoom or over teams or whatever it was. And then had the, the, the other screen, the TV screen for like to see the chat. It was it was truly breathtaking. It was breathtaking. And you know what? It worked great. So good for him. Absolute legend. This is Kira. I am going to give the good old blackboard and or chalkboard a B. I am on the same page with Annika. I do like writing out notes as we go learning with the prof kind of at a steady pace. It is my absolute pet peeve when a prof tries to teach like a math-based course or a function-based course with PowerPoint. And they're just like, equation, 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 answer. And I'm like, I have no idea what you did, sir. Please slow down. This is not helping me. The only criticism I have of the Blackboard and Chalkboard is that when the prof or TA is literally writing and they're standing in front of what they're writing and you can't read a single thing. I remember, I think it was maybe Dr. Felipe in 2F. He'd have like three panels of whiteboard and he'd go from one to the other. But if you were on the far side of the room, you couldn't see anything until he was done on that one panel. So you're kind of just like waiting for him to write his thing and then you could write everything down. But yeah, I, I quite like the blackboard and chalkboard. So I would give it a B. I must say, uh, it depends on the prof and how they are using the blackboard slash whiteboard. Uh, I've had many profs that are great at drawing. Their handwriting is amazing, right? They're drawing these beautiful diagrams and taking their time to write out everything accordingly. A great learning experience. And then I've had some other profs that have, you know, drawn a circle that looks like a square and claimed it's the moon, you know, and it's just like, like I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, I think uh, in terms of learning, I would give it probably a C or a D. But if you use it right, it could bump up to an S. So so really what you're doing, Landon, is you're not providing a substantive opinion at all. And you're taking the coward's way out and saying that it could be anything, you know. Although I must I must admit the, uh, the penmanship of the instructor is pretty important. Or under underappreciated skill your ability to erase a blackboard without leaving all kinds of crap all over it so that everybody can't see it. You know, like I had a couple of profs that still teach in this department that will remain nameless, that were like notorious for only actually erasing like 60% of what they had just written and leaving the rest of it on there. And then at, by the end of the class, it's just this spider web of like what's new and what's not. So it'd be pretty interesting. 
it's kind of cool too. I, I must say that uh, growing up and watching the movies of you know scientists designing the moon landing and they're writing on these chalkboards that take up an entire wall, you know, uh, and and seeing that in university of a prof actually going through and using the multiple layers of chalkboards and seeing at the end of the class it's like this is what I learned today, right? That's really fulfilling and honestly very cool. Uh, and I kind of miss that about being in person. But I used to do that all the time studying. So I don't know. I would study for tests like math tests by just doing all the practice questions on the, on the blackboard in an empty room. And I would always make a point of never erasing it so that when I left the next person that came into the room would be like, Oh man, look what this guy was doing. Yeah, that's right. Did you just talking about how much you hated that too? And other props to that Jake? No, I was talking about how much I hate it when other profs don't erase well, when they have more to write Landon. <laughs> When they write over old things, I don't just go there and do all my questions and don't erase the board. Just leave the last questions on there. God. Sorry, my mistake. Just nickel and diming me to death here. All right. So uh, that was fun. Uh, thanks for giving us your take on, on these learning tools. And thanks for joining us and just giving us your two cents on your learning experience uh, in this year. Uh, and yeah, like all of you said, hopefully we are back to normal or some sort of normalcy sometime soon and that we can find places to eat uh, on campus. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a great time. Thanks for joining us. And um, I'm sure uh, the faculties, our listeners, our, our students would really appreciate your insights. So uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah, thanks everyone for your time. Really appreciate it. And I know the other students do too. Thanks again for having us, Vince and Jake. Thanks, Vince and Jake. I will see you in another course very shortly. Thank you very much, both of you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. For having us on your podcast it was an honor yeah i had a fun time so i just want to say thank you guys for having me on your podcast all right so welcome back to uh, the podcast. Uh, this is our segment on the tier list now. Uh, we had a good time chatting with our students. And now, um, as we talked about at the end of the, our, our uh, interview with the students, uh, our tier list uh, today is on learning tools in 2021. And uh, the judging criteria uh, is on usefulness to us as instructors, usefulness to the students, uh, how easily uh, they could be used, and really just whatever think, uh, whatever things that we can come up with you know like it's pretty much our preference it's, it's not really any judging criteria so whatever we say go here so it is what it is okay yeah, so <laughs> we are speaking in a vacuum right yeah, exactly so um let's get it started jake uh what's your thought on avenue to learn and i guess like the bigger thing is like bright space you know like d2l that yeah kind of stuff. yeah so um i can't actually imagine a world without avenue to learn anymore. It's actually really good at, at what it's for. You know, it's it's a little bit too... Sometimes people will get cranky about wasting computer memory and time to like load f like pretty looking graphics and like the fact that the transitions all have to like fade in and fade out. Like, I'm not going to get into that because it is a little bit annoying uh, than just like a, a pretty bare bones platform, but it really does do a lot for us and I think a lot of instructors kind of take for granted how much easier their life is oh, yeah. because of Avenue Learn. Um, of course when I started at McMaster as an undergrad we had WebCT oh. which was I mean like you you make the sound right but like you know it was when I was an undergrad starting in 2006 that was pretty much what you could get in terms of an online platform in 2006. We had that one year of ELM now that's the appropriate <laughs> reaction Ugh. Uh. because like we we yeeted that as a, as a university after one year. But Avenue to Learn continues to be improved. Um, functionality is good. I've used a lot of features in the last year on Avenue that I have never used before. So things like conditional release. Yeah. So I taught an asynchronous version of engineering graphics this summer. And, you know, the, the quizzes were all conditional released on completion of the lecture modules, which, you know, love it or hate it, asynchronous or, or or synchronous, whatever you like, it doesn't really matter, but it does help with that sort of thing. And then even for me, I found that last year in my elective courses, when I gave 
a take-home exam problem set. I wanted to give them three hours to do the exam problem set, but I wanted them to be able to access it over like a week whenever they wanted to do it, mm -hmm. okay? And the really nice thing that I could do there is I could just have like a dummy quiz that was just one question. is like, are you ready to begin the exam? And then once you get 100% on that quiz, aka by answering yes, then the Dropbox would appear for you, right? And then the timestamp, like it would never disappear, but the timestamp would just show you based on when you did the quiz and then when you submitted your exam, like that you did it within three hours, right? So anyway, I've really appreciated it. Um, I, I tend to, to use it along with, with YouTube basically exclusively for any asynchronous, you know, offerings. Um, and, you know, the grade book kind of sucks still. I'll be honest with you, the grade book sucks yeah. still. But anyway, Avenue to Learn is an A. Avenue to Learn is basically like synonymous with, with every course that I've taught ever. So yeah. I like Avenue. Yeah, I, w I would have to agree. Um, I, I think functionality wise, if, if you're using kind of the basic stuff, you know, uploading content, um, the quizzes sometimes could be hit or miss. Like if you're, if you really like, I know there were professors that try to do like real math questions and physics questions. Oh, it's painful. And it's, like it, it's just brutal. Where you have to like type significant yeah. figures and like, you know, report the units and it's looking for specific characters. And yeah. it's like, make sure you put everything in square brackets or something. Yeah. Like, so so I, I think if you know the limitations of Avenue and, and, and you work around them, then it's, then it's great at, at what it does good, mm -hmm. like, what it does well, right? So, so it's like, you know, um, setting up the drop boxes, setting up, you know, your, 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 your modules or whatever it might be. Um, like, like you said, Jake, like, I can't imagine not having this, like that there's just no good way of organizing your, your, your course um, on an online format to, if we don't have um, an, an, a learning management system like this, right? So um, yeah, I would have to give it an A, um, the great book and, and, and the quiz functionality um, keeps it at an A, like if, if they really figure stuff out there. Um, it would be it would be um, an S for me. Yeah, I like, and just to kind of go off that, like there are alternatives. Like it, you know, shout out to to Kevin Dunn, yeah. who used to always run his own wiki pages, mm -hmm. right? But but the thing is, is like you can't expect, especially for people that aren't in in a feed, like a STEM field, unless they have a passion for that sort of thing. You can't expect people to have like a minor in computer science where they like feel comfortable making a wiki, yeah. which is not to be confused with like making a Google page. Or like a like a GoDaddy, which is like yeah. you can drag and drop and like put things around. Like we're talking scripting and HTML or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you know, pretty low level, but still there, right? And yeah. making it appealing and like not just a disaster yeah. is is hard, and it yeah. takes a lot of work. It's the, kind of the same reason that that people still yell about how they they insist on writing everything in LaTeX when you know the collaborative software of like Office three sixty five is just so much more stable yeah. and better with with technical writing than it used to be and just so many more people can use it right and it's just like you know so anyway avenue is is good just to move on quickly there then uh, sticking with online management software specifically around um like let's just say it's not exactly where you put anything for for the students but it's it's where you kind of go for all of the information related to your class how do you feel about Mosaic. Uh, <laughs> so, so Mosaic is, um, I guess it's a necessary evil. Like you, you do have to, you know, be able to register for your class and whatnot. Um, when we were in undergrad or when I was in undergrad, uh, we had this thing called Mugsy. McMaster, love, love that. McMaster undergraduate student something system or something like interface? that. Or interface? Interface. I, I don't, don't know. know. Mugsy. Okay. And, and I would say Mosaic is actually better than Mugsy. Um, you know, like in Mugsy, what we we couldn't figure out what our schedule looks like. We have to like you know convert the text and then put it in in a calendar on our own. Um, but apparently now it, it gives it to to the students right away. Yeah. Um, what we don't even know what the conflict is back in Mugsy is like just gives you like a red thing. It's like oh it doesn't work, and I'm like oh, okay like. Let's try this. You know, like we yeah. just don't know. We just don't know what's happening on the student side. So on on that end, Mosaic is an improvement. Um, but I mean, that's a low bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to give it a, a C. It's just very unintuitive. Like the the categories that they have makes very little sense to me. Like yeah, like they went, they what went is to this the... self service? Like I, I, I just know. don't understand. What, like 
They like, went to the to Metro look like yeah. a few years back, which is like, you know, the tiles. And like, I, I'm, by the way, can I, I'm just going to go off the board for a second. I hate it. Okay. Like I want to scream every time I open frickin' file navigator on my frickin' <laughs> computer. And for some reason, every time I make a new folder, the default view is not like the list with like yeah. the details. It's the it's, yeah. fudging tiles, man. Nobody like, uses the tiles. I'm like, why <laughs> though? Stop yeah. trying to make me use the tiles. I want to organize it alphabetically. I don't want to see it. Even when I go into my pictures folder, I want to see a list. I yeah. don't want to see a bunch of thumbnails <laughs> that like I can only see like six per page. And yeah. I, oh man, does that piss me off. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Yeah, and, and I mean, the, the, that's... That's exactly it with Mosaic. The, the navigation system is is completely broken. Oh, like yeah. it, it just, I, I just don't know. And then uh, from what I hear from the administrator side, um, like the the whole like accounting, all that stuff, that's a mess. Like I, I don't I don't know. Like I don't do a lot of that. Like I literally just send stuff to shout out to Christina. It's like yeah. hey, like can you do this expense report <laughs> for me? Because <laughs> because I don't I have no idea how to navigate it. Right? Because like it's just it's just a gong shell. It's just so it. it to me, it's a C. Um, it it does something okay. Like the student, like the scheduling seems to be all right. But it's just it takes so many clicks oh, it's, to, yeah. to and, to, and to the, get the to places. wait time. Yeah. So like you know the fact that it needs you to put in a chart field string and like it won't let you put it in just like as a number. You have to like put it in as a number. Yeah. And then like if you press enter or click away, it needs to reload the whole page, right? Where that thing is now there. <laughs> And like it's so easy to just click on and start typing on the next thing, and then you look up, and like you know, two seconds later, and you've gotten nowhere because it had to reload the, and it's just so yeah. annoying. Uh, <laughs> I come from a special perspective. Uh, my wife works as like the key clerk and like the customer service in facility services, so she does uh, the payroll and stuff through Mosaic. She does exp um, not expense reports, um, service requests, like if you ever need like anything done, and like. I, I respect her so much because like she's figured it out and like it still takes her so long like there's no way to automate it there's no way to like make it so that it just like figures itself out so anyway I'm going to give Mosaic the D and uh, you know maybe a C I understand it is better than Muggsy Muggsy was just a hot yeah. mess but like well deserved D <laughs> it's very well like it earned it yeah. and D's get degrees yeah. let us not forget this there you go okay um, next, um, now we're moving away from, uh, you know, the software piece. We're going to go hardware, uh, but maybe not the type of hardware you're thinking about. What is your thought? Pen and paper, Jake. Okay, yeah. So as we move out of, like, learning management and into the classroom, right? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to hit you with the pen and paper. The pen and paper, you know, as a student... The pen and paper was how I took all my notes. Actually, exactly the them. same way. We're in my office. There's a bunch of binders down there on the bottom shelf, including that one black cloth binder, which contains all of my cheat sheets for every course I ever took in undergrad uh, to like write those exams and stuff, which I am so proud of. Um, I am a pencil and paper guy, mm. actually. Uh, even on tests and exams where they say you can write in pencil, but we won't regrade your stuff. I was like... No, worth, give the me pencil. Risk, yeah. worth the risk worth the risk because I just I make mistakes and I like to erase I don't like to like scratch things out I feel like the added resistance of the pencil lead on the page actually improves my penmanship and I, I'm 100% serious like a roll like a like a ballpoint pen or whatever like I don't have just very steady hands I don't have very steady hands so like it can dither around a little bit and look kind of like janky but the pencil I always feel like it just it'll stabilize my hand a little better and I feel real good about it. So um, I was the kind of guy that marched around between every class with a big ass binder. And at the beginning of every class, I would pull it out. It's like a three fold. It would like fold out yeah. into like a tree. All my friends would be annoyed because I'd be like in their space. But then I'd take out a couple pieces of paper. I always bought like super thick with two C's, obviously, graph paper. Like, that's <laughs> what I did. All my notes was on graph paper, yeah. not on line paper. I would take a couple pieces out, I'd put it away, I'd get out a ruler and a pencil, and I'm ready to go. And I was just like, I was th thrilled. So pen and paper also gets the A. I'm not a student anymore, um, but I love taking notes and, like, writing with How do you, you manage those small desks on, on those, you know, lecture halls? Well, that's just it, right? So, like, the point <laughs> is that you take a binder out, you, like, you, you flip to the tab of the course, there's always like a bunch of blank sheets at the back. So like I flip to like where the blank sheet is. I take out, I always take out two. You always try to fit 
one lecture's worth of notes on one double-sided page, but sometimes you have to go over. I would always start a new page for a new lecture, and then I would put it away, like I'd put it back in my bag, and then i just get it out at the end, usually passive-aggressively at like 19 minutes past the hour. I, I get it out. You know, there's nothing worse than an, as an instructor, right, than like it's 119, class goes to 120, and you can't hear yourself over the clicking of like the binder rings, cha-cha, cha-cha, and everybody's like packing their bag up. Yeah. You're like, ah. Um, but yeah, no, I, would, I was that person, so. Yeah. I, I was exactly the same. I mean, back in my day, in there were know, no like, tablets. There, there, what is this? There, what there, is this tablet? There's no tablet. Like I, I didn't have a laptop, right? Like I, I had a desktop at home, and so I was forced to do pen and paper. And and um, like you, I, I did pencil. The, the problem with pencil is I, I, I don't write hard enough. Um, so coward. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. Just I just couldn't see it. So like I, I had to switch to to pen, um, uh, like probably in second year. Um, granted, I, I never really looked back on my notes because like they were very much in, illegible. Like I'm very surprised that you could fit one lecture in one sheet of paper back and forth. Like I, I have these um, notebooks, like these like three ring notebooks where where like Hi Roy or whatever I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, yeah. like so I just have one per course. Um, and instead of binders, and then and then like you know, I, I would go two, three, four pages per lecture at least, yeah. Because uh, I write big and ugly, and I try to draw pictures, but they're also ugly. Um, but um, the, they were very useful because you know, uh, as you know, in Chem Eng, like all our all our exams are open book, and so it just it just helps me to to go through my notes instead of the textbook, because the textbook like sometimes I just don't know how to navigate the textbook. I tell you, ugly or not, yeah writing shit down yeah. is so much better. It's just psychologically, like, you, I, you can I look up the yeah. research and, like, prove it to students, but, like, writing it down and doing it versus yeah. passively watching yeah. slides fly by and, like, yeah. not doing it, it is a different level of, like, understanding. It's, it's, a, diff it's, it's a different thing. Exactly. And it's yeah. a much, much, it's proven to be a much, much better way yeah. to absorb information I, I agree so so like i mean i would go to all the lectures write stuff down and then i'll you know spend much less time than, than my, my peers in, in studying um it, it's just like it just like like if i if i typed it in like i, I probably wouldn't have retained um yeah much, right? even it's, typing it yeah. but but just even doing even typing it is good i had a friend that that took ugly notes uh not unlike yourself <laughs> your words not mine but like would take them home and yeah. as a part of their studying, they would transcribe all the handwritten notes into a, a continuous rolling document. Wow. And then they would print that off to like, study. you know, use as their yeah. cheat sheet or, or cheat sheets or whatever to study. And that was like, so, you know, you go to class for an hour and then you go home, you spend 30 minutes going over the same material, maybe over the weekend for a course, you spend an hour and a half. And it's not actually that big of a time investment, but that helps you revisit the same stuff. You have to interpret your own writing. You have to like, you know, take pictures of your of your sketches or, or whatever, or reproduce those on like in a drawing software. And like, it really does make a big difference. Yeah. And, and I love it. So can I tell you a quick emotional story yeah. before we move on? So I, fun fact, I wrote every single exam since grade 11 with the same pencil. Okay. Like a lead pencil. It was a, it was a clicky pencil. Yeah, yeah it was a, so I, I did all mechanical pencils. It was a Zebra M502. It was like a really good, it was like $9 for the one pencil. It's like nice and heavy. Good investment. It was, it was like a titanium pencil. It was broken by the end. Like the, the clippy that clips onto your pocket or whatever was gone. The eraser was like permanently like stuck in it. So I actually had to take the, the tip off to reinsert lead the back way. But like every single exam, either Scantron or written from grade 11 to the end of my graduate degree, okay? Because I did take some exams in, in grad school. I wrote with the same pencil. And the other thing that I, that I used to say was like I had a buddy, Stu, who I saw this weekend, and shout out to Stu. He's like my best friend from, from undergrad, and, and we were super, super close, still are. And he was the best man at my wedding, right? And so I had this idea where like and he he knew he knows his pencil right because like this is just like a meme uh, amongst yeah. my friends like it's like jake's got to have his pencil so so we had the night before my wedding right i wrote my wedding vows with the pencil with the pencil wow. right and i said to myself that this is the last thing that i need this pencil for and i actually as like an extra gift to my best man 
I gave him my pencil. Wow. That like, because I said like, you know, it wasn't the pencil, like, you know, it's like my lucky pencil, right? Like, oh, it got me through university. But like really what got me through university was my friends, mm-hmm. particularly like my best friend that yeah. like carried my ass through all these courses and all these projects. So I said, listen, man, you know, you're the, you're the real hero. So I gave him the pencil. Uh, after I like finished my last thing, I'm getting a little emotional. Yeah, I'm like teary eyed, like, man. Like, I, I am. Man, it like... was like it was, it was, it was like you know, it felt felt good to do that. Yeah. And then you know, so so there you go. So I gave him my my pencil's gone. So I, and... I passed my last test. My last test was my marriage vow. So and literally, go. I mean, two years ago, right? Like, I mean, yeah, two years ago tomorrow. Exactly. So uh, no, excuse me, three years ago. Three tomorrow. years. Sorry, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2018. Yeah, man, 2020 did not happen. Yeah, yeah it was a, it was just a blank. Um, anyway, so pen and paper aside. Um, on the instructor side, yeah, blackboard or whiteboard. Yeah, so so um, I would give blackboard and whiteboard a B on my end because I suck at writing, um, and and it's just like my students would be a testament to that. I'm way worse on the tablet actually. Um, so um, and, and I prefer whiteboard. I just don't like chalk all over me. But but I I I, I like it as a teaching tool because it slows me down. And it slows yeah. me down, and then I could Huge. go. Th- I could go through the the examples and whatnot, and and you know, like especially with a whiteboard, I, I have like all these colored um, markers, right? Um, and, and you know, you, you could draw things. Like for me, I was teaching um, in iBiomed. I, I teach a genetic engineering course, and so I'm drawing like DNA, um, you know, different proteins and different colors and whatnot, and it helps to illustrate it. But as I'm drawing. I could talk through it, and, yeah. and, and I think that's the best part of the blackboard and whiteboard, where, where you are narrating as you as you as you write. Like mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. there are people that just like write and, and not talk and then write a bunch and then start talking. Like yeah. I I don't think that's a very effective way of using a, a whiteboard. yelling into the whiteboard. Ex- exactly right. So 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 for me, um, yeah, it's it's a B because of, of my writing. If my writing was better, that then it has to be an A um, because it's it's a it's much. I think it it helps the students much better than than a slide. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more about the slowing you down. That's important. I also um, couldn't agree more about the versatility mm-hmm. uh, and and the fact that by the way I relate. I also do not like my writing on a tablet is it's the same problem as when I write with a pen that I just complained about is that I don't have very steady hands and you have the added like issue of the the dithering naturally on the screen like mm-hmm. I just like my tablet screen just never seems right you know yeah. it doesn't feel good uh, some people by the way sh- like respect because I see some students like write on the tablet and I'm like how are like, you doing yeah. that like, like they look like how real you, font yeah <laughs> I'm like how are you doing this this is incredible yeah. so anyway so for me um, actually surprisingly especially given what's going to come up later in this list mm-hmm. of which a bunch of undergrads are going to be like what uh, I am going to give the Blackboard my highest grade. I love teaching on the Blackboard. The Blackboard, by the way, as opposed to the Whiteboard, I like the colors. The Blackboard is the same thing as like the pencil. Mm-hmm. So like it, the chalk, dra- like it makes my writing neater by by not letting me like be shaky handed. So like I have to like press and like drag. Um, I The first time I ever taught 2EO4, 3EO4 at the time, yeah. was purely on the Blackboard. So. Anybody that's in yeah. 2E or took 2E with me or 3E with me or whatever, and we had like the modules, right? I remember that, yeah. All that stuff. The best teaching eval I ever have had for 3E or 2E04 was the first year I ever taught it, and it was purely on the blackboard. Mm-hmm. Not saying that it hasn't gone fine since and it's gone well, but like, you know, within standard deviations or whatever. But like, I think that the whole slowing me down as I'm like trying to draw out these systems of equations and whatever, I think that really yeah. helps. Um, and so I love teaching with a blackboard. Of course, I can't do that because of equity and inclusion with the whole online yeah. hybrid thing. Um, and so that's fine. Like, I, I'm not going to complain. But I, when given the opportunity, yeah. I love it. Like, if we go to, like, in-person office hours and we do that, I, like, love to draw on a blackboard or a, or a whiteboard. Yeah. yeah. And I think you bring up a good point. I, I don't know if the blackboard and whiteboard will be used as much used as much because i I think the expectation is that now students want us to record all our lectures even post pandemic right which i used to do with a camcorder but now that we've got like teams and 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 echo 360 or whatever i might just not go back to the camcorder just because it's a pain in the ass yeah you know and then that means we just have to 
have digital whiteboards and stuff like that, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. You know what you know what else is nice about a an analog option like the yeah. pen and paper or the whiteboard blackboard? It doesn't screw up. So yeah. like you know, like we, no lost, te- no we lost internet. Problems. We lost internet in BSB uh, on Friday after oh, yeah. for four N lecture, like with like five minutes to go, and it's just yeah. like, well, you know, some like last year, somebody somebody will remember this. I think um, Landon Steenbackers had a good meme about it. He made it. It's like my my laptop has a detachable tablet screen, and like something went wrong during the middle of a lecture where like the connection was faulty, so it like kept saying it's attached, unattached, attached, unattached, like over, like it probably did it like 40 times until I finally just like rage quit and went and did the rest of the lesson on my desktop. And so like, that doesn't happen. Exactly. With a, with exactly, a whiteboard exactly, or a blackboard, yeah. right? Like what's yeah. the worst that could happen is like so you, the eraser shit. Yeah. Or like you, 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 you run out of like marker, like whatever, right? Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. or, or like, with the blackboard, I always break the chalk for whatever I always reason. Break the chalk it's too. brutal, and then like you have like this little like nub of like oh, yeah. the chalk. Oh yeah, I actually have my own chalk and my own markers and my own eraser. I went to Granite, erase, to, yeah. like I have it in an old glasses case so that it doesn't dust everything up. <laughs> but I have my own eraser just in case the blackboard eraser is like crap. There's nothing worse than walking into a room that has blackboards, but all the erasers are whiteboard erasers. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. people think those are the same it's thing. Not. <laughs> like, why do you think that this whiteboard eraser is going to be effective? It just, like, spreads white around, so now it's a whiteboard that you have chalk on, right? It's garbage. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah. Um, so, the, the next one is now we're back to, like, you know, uh, lectures, but now online lectures. Um, so, Microsoft Teams, and then I guess we could group Zoom in, but but Microsoft Teams and Zoom is slightly different, but uh, I'll let you um, yeah, break it up. Yeah, I have actually really discovered Microsoft Teams as being pretty useful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, we used to do 4N where like the assignment submissions were just shared documents between the TAs, me, and the group. And therefore, like all of their... Um, submissions when I started teaching the course 2015, 16, 17 were on Google Drive. So mm-hmm. it's all Google documents. But now that everybody has 365, everybody's got Teams, basically it's it's permeated all students. They know how to use it. Yeah. I can set up private channels for the groups. They can meet there, which of course in an online world is necessary, but even without it's still useful. And they can do all of their assignment submissions and stuff just by having a repository of their private team of all this stuff. And it's like really streamlined things because the TAs can just go in and comment right on the document and it, and it ends yeah. up like being pretty quick. Uh, they get feedback very, very rapidly and, and everything feels pretty good about that. Um, the discussion features of like the chat features and stuff is, is nice. The memes Again, and emojis. The, yeah. I, love, I love I love the it. GIFs, man. Yeah. I, I'm all for the GIFs. They can be distracting when teaching a class if people are dropping GIFs in the chat. Um, and But that's something that Teams has over Zoom. At least that yeah. versatility yeah. is there. Um, you know, Zoom is good. As a matter of fact, as a, as a video conferencing tool, I think Zoom is better than Teams. I think Teams yeah. is a little bit laggy and a little bit like jank sometimes. Yeah. And, the, uh, the chat function is not as good. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. So, like, you get benefits for each. Uh, Teams is also inferior. So, Zoom is much better if you're going to share video on your screen. So, yeah. if, like, if I'm going to share, like, a, like a, say, a safety video in 4N04, I actually, like, have those lectures or tutorials, like, as a one-off. We do, like, a Zoom, Zoom call just because the to share like a video on Teams is a disaster. But yeah. but Zoom is opt- it has that little button to like optimize for like sharing media. And I think that that's very useful too. So overall, um, it's still buggy. It's still like lame. I would rather not use it. I, I've given out a lot of good grades. I'll give MS Teams and Zoom a B. I will give them that not because they're unworthy, but just because they're not my preferred method of, of classes. Yeah. That's all. So for me, I, I think Microsoft Teams, if it's on the video conferencing side that will probably give i'll probably give it a c or even a d it's just like yeah it's just so bad it's it's okay i'm glad you said that because i was trying to like soften it a little bit but yeah the video call is just yeah not good right and and, um i don't know why they decided to change the the way they record stuff because like before it recorded straight to uh stream and then there's like you know uh, ca- like auto captioning and now it just saves it on a on on the file tab and there's no like video captioning and so like I, I don't understand that decision um so on, on the video conferencing side like breakout rooms just just a total like oh don't even like, yeah garbage That's, there's part. a combination between teams being inept at breakout rooms and yeah. students just not 
yeah. being down from yeah. playing Game of Thrones. So, so Zoom is far more superior in terms of those pieces. I do like the the Teams chat versus the Zoom chat. Like so, like I would still run a lecture on Teams over Zoom just because of the chat. Yeah. Uh, um, like feature because that's mainly how students communicate to us is not through like unmuting and and, and turning heaven, on the video right forbid. so so um like zoom as a, as a video conferencing i would give it a b but as a as a instruction piece probably you know a c or, or a d uh, so but microsoft teams where where i would give it an a now now i'm really being granular it, it's it's actually the 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 team management side yeah. oh yeah and so something uh, that zoom distinctly just does not have a, exactly okay. right so 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 i mean like creating private channels sharing sharing files and i, I think there could be overload let's just say uh, on on our side we have so many teams and so many oh, yeah. like file sharing and and just people just tagging everywhere uh, which could get a little bit overwhelming, but I think on the student side, um, it's it's a good way of managing the, their their group work. They only get to see one private channel per per team and things like that, and I think that's yeah. completely manageable. On the instructor side, Teams has been a disaster in terms of just boundaries. Oh uh, man, I'm glad you brought that. So up. so like student just texting me at like you know 11:30 in the evenings you know like expecting me to respond like things like that it's just like ugh so overall i would have to give it a c because of the of the video conferencing and just the the lack of boundary but the team management side it's 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 good yeah right so yeah i i agree i agree completely so that that seems that seems pretty good uh, we'll stick with the the online slash in person class learning tools for a second, uh, this time centered around engagement for the students. Uh, so things like Mentimeter or Kahoot, or if you prefer the iClicker route, yeah. uh, have you used any of those? Uh, do you do you see yourself using those? And, uh, and what do you think about those? Yeah, so I've never, like, I've had classes where, like, where I was co-teaching a class where the other instructor was using iClicker, and then I never used an iClicker. Right. Um, like I mean, iClicker is really just for attendance. It's not really Basically. for anything. And then, and then I mean, students can just grab other students' iClicker to, to come in. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's it's a okay way of engagement. But I, I like for students that come into the class. Like usually, I don't have that much. Like the people that are there that want to be there, like they're, they're engaged relatively. So it's like whatever. Uh, Mantimeter and Kahoot, um, I would use it as one off. Let's just say, you know, like let, let's have fun and, 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 you know, do like a quiz and, and whatnot. But I won't use it like on a regular basis because it just takes too much time to interact. Oh, God. And, and so it's like, oh, here's like, you know, a minute to answer this question. And like, you know, 10 minutes later, you have only answered five questions and then half the class have dropped out because of connection problems and whatnot. Yeah. So, so I would give it. Um, I would give it a D as an instructional tool. Um, like if it's like let's just have fun and and, and run a quiz and, and 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 or like like a trivia thing, it's fine. It's completely yeah, fine. Yeah, it gets and, the job done. And it gets the job done. But but I think as an instructional tool, it, it just like a little bit too buggy for me, and, and just that the lag time is too much. So yeah, yeah, it's like it's truly that's where that's where progress in class goes to die. Yeah. I've said it before to you, like just between the two of us, but but the setup is bad. I mean, like everybody's like, oh, it's easy to set up or whatever. It's like, you know what? You don't understand how I ask questions though. Yeah. Anybody that tells me like, uh, and, and I'm speaking particularly about like maybe salespeople for, for Kahoot or, or whatever. They're like, oh, but it only takes like five, like two minutes to set up a question. It's like, but what you don't understand is that that question needs to be preordained. It needs yeah. to be like a built-in quiz question or something. But that's yeah. not how I ask questions. All of my questions are organic. We're yeah, all like, off the like, cuff. I'll like, like oh. stumble upon something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, somebody somebody impressed me and tell me why this isn't going to work. Or like maybe I make an error in my own MATLAB code and I'll say, okay, teachable moment. Yeah. You know, what's the mistake? Like what have I done wrong? And, and those kinds of things, I'm not going to go and set up a Kahoot just for that, yeah, just to yeah. try to get people to engage, yeah. right? Like... I feel like I can be engaging enough without, I don't want that crutch, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't want that, I don't want to be kind of shoehorned into it. So I would agree with the with the D, maybe a C, 
in certain contexts. Like it's nice to have like trivia night on Exa- Kahoot, Exactly, right. But that's not a teaching tool though, it, right? Like absolutely, it, so, right? So judging so you, criteria, you can make yeah. it up, right? Like so. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what? You you got me. I'm going to go back to the D on that one. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh we have two more, and and they are very specific to I guess our program. I guess, yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll talk about both of them because um, it's kind of the bane of some of the students' existence. Uh, at least they, sure they are. At, at least they, they tell us. Oh, so I'm so glad we're talking about these. <laughs> so so um, Jake, what's your thought on MATLAB? Okay. So I think that MATLAB is misinterpreted by everybody. Not just some, and, uh, okay, so not everybody. Some people like, you know, enjoy it or whatever. But oftentimes people misinterpret my feelings about MATLAB. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go on record. Okay, this is the record. This is on the internet. So anybody could hear this. It's forever. Okay? It's forever. All right, this is, this is a thing. People seem to think that I idolize MATLAB. MATLAB is not very good. Okay, it is a very streamlined it's an applied coding language it is not an architectural language you can't make anything useful okay you can't make applicate well you can make like GUIs and stuff but you can't make executable applications with any kind of like efficacy Mm -hmm. you can't make uh, databases you can't make uh, website you can't do anything really fundamental what MATLAB is is it is a tool that has been specifically designed to be approachable and to be used to solve problems you have to have a drill if you want to build a house. Do you need the drill? No, you could use a screwdriver for everything if you really wanted to, right? Do you have to use MATLAB to solve like all these mass and energy balances? No, you could do it by hand and like struggle through it or solve this integral analytically and find the general solution or like, you know, crank out Euler's method by hand because like, you know, maybe that integral is unsolvable you know, or that ODE is unsolvable by hand because it doesn't conform to like the three types of ODE that can be solved by hand. Like, do you need it? No, but does it make your life better? Do you need to learn how to use a drill before you can build the house and like before the drill improves your efficiency? Yeah, do you need to learn how to drive a tractor combine before you can use it to make way more progress on your, your agriculture business than you could with like a small tractor or heaven help you like by hand? Yeah, but people seem to think that I have this kind of like thing where like if you don't know MATLAB you can't do anything and this is just not true Um, people seem to like they ask me like oh I did this in Excel am I going to lose marks and I'm like why do you think I have anything against Microsoft Excel what a terrific piece of software Excel is and by the way is grounded in Visual Basic which is a much more robust and ground up programming language than something like MATLAB so anyway I'm going to give MATLAB a B I think it's extremely useful I think that people think that it's way harder than it is. I have like very, very charged feelings about it. I like MATLAB. I think it's easy, like relative to something else, right? I think that the barrier to entry for students is very high and they tend to think that it's worse than it is. And I, I can't control how people think. All I can try to do is support people to see it for what it's good for. Um, and what it's really good for is helping you solve engineering problems. And that's what I want you to learn in a, in a course like 2E or if you go to like a 4H and we're like doing PCA or whatever, like and we're coding that from scratch. It's just like just fundamentally, I just want to use it as a learning tool so that you can do cool stuff. Yeah. Right. So anyway, end of rant. Um, open, <laughs> open brace, backslash, rant, <laughs> close brace. OK, there you yeah. go. And, and I would have to agree, like if people are like thinking MATLAB is like a Python, then it that's not what it is. It's right? like much but less capable. Than I, 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 exactly, right? Flat like, out. <laughs> like you, you, you just have to understand what this tool is for, yeah. right? And, and I think it does a good job at what it is for. Um, I mean, granted, you know how to use it, right? Like, sure, like, sure, like you sure, said. sure, 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 sure. And so, like, I mean, I, I don't teach any MATLAB courses. The, the one thing that we do use, what we, we I, I teach the second year iBio course, and we use... Um, Symbio. Symbio, a toolbox, yeah. which which is no programming, and, and, and it's just simply drag and drop, and you add in your ODEs, and, and you're happy, right? Like, but add your parameters and whatnot. But you still have to understand, you know, the fundamentals of, 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 of the... Of the um, of the mechanisms that, that that's happening in, in your biosystems, right? So so it's just, um, like, 
for for me, I think MATLAB is is a great tool. Um, it is on the pricey side, and, and if we don't have the you know of the sure, uh, sure of the license and whatnot, and and I actually don't know um, you know if a lot of companies have it. I, I'm guessing some companies use yeah, it. I think and, and more some, than we than more than used to yeah. be, more than you might think yeah. actually. So so I, I would have to agree with you. I think it's a B. I think it's a great tool to solve. You know engineering problems, um, but if you have other expectations of it, or if you like, just don't want to learn it, then obviously you're gonna hate it. But I don't think it's that hard, and I think MATLAB actually has really good resources apart from you know like what we teach you in in, in our program. MATLAB is great on ramps to 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 learn different things about MATLAB. You yeah. know that they have the the machine learning on ramp, which you know a, a great primer to to how to use MATLAB for machine learning and things like that. So so I think that they have good support, they have good community, um, and it's just it's just a good tool. Um, yeah. yeah. The reality is, you will never learn something that you do not want to learn. Exactly. Right. You know? I you know if if I try to teach you how to play tennis and you just don't like it then you will not learn it yeah. you know if i try to teach you how to keep score in tennis and you just are just like disinterested and this is a classic this is another laura thing but like finally now that we've been playing she's like knows how to keep score but like for yeah. years it's just like she, yeah. i don't know who, i don't i don't understand how to keep score i'm like listen it's not that bad all you need to do is just apply a neuron's worth of effort to like dedicating this memory space to just like understanding yeah. but like, this. You know, why 15, 30, and then go to 40? Why not 45? I'm not gonna get, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> I do, I could tell you, I could tell you, yeah. but we're not, we're not gonna yeah. talk about that today. Anyway, so um, last but not least, and we're, we're running out of time, I know you gotta get moving on, so I would like to ask your opinion on the quintessential uh, simulation software package used in chemical engineering, Aspen Plus. Yeah, so. I think, so we, we teach that course, uh, shout out to Dr. Tom Adams, who Love was a guest um, in, in our show a few episodes ago. Um, I, I, I think students have a love-hate relationship, or actually just a hate relationship to, to Aspen. Um, <laughs> but but, but I, I think it's a fantastic, not just a simulation tool, but a, a, a teaching tool, um, because in 3G is the course that brings everything together. Uh, sure. and, and they're able to see like um, what a real chemical and what what chemical engineering really is I, I think I think at up till oh yeah up to the point of 3g students just have like piece pieces yeah. of chemical engineering You've spent and, all your and, time learning what each of the different shapes of Lego yeah. block is and, and, and so like I mean Aspen plus it's it's confusing it sometimes doesn't work it's it's laggy it takes a, it takes a long time you know. And students get really wacky answers and whatnot. All that, all that aside, I think, I think you do need a package like this to bring everything together. For sure. And so I, I think for what it's worth, um, it's a B for me. Um, despite of you know how, like especially for students that took three G on on like virtually and they had to like come in on, on a oh, virtual God. machine and things yeah. like that, um, but. Beyond that, like I, I think it's it's a good tool to bring everything together. I, I, I like your discussion on MATLAB. I think we just have to understand like what is this used for, and um, I, I think the struggle with students is that like they they, they want to put everything together and just like have it magically work if they click on the button, right? Like, yeah. um, but they don't like this is where you need to understand the fundamental theory of of all the courses we've yeah. we've taught you, right? And, and so. Um, for, for, for that piece, like I, I would give it a B. Um, the, the, there are obviously technical issues um, that, that students struggle with, but, but I, I think as a teaching tool, it, it's, it's great. Uh, it's, so you touched on a couple of points, and I'll, and I'll be quick, but there's a couple of things about Aspen Plus that, that drive me crazy. Yeah. Um, one of them is that, first of all, students should recognize how unbelievably hard chemical engineering is right when you have a distillation column unit in aspen plus let's call it a rad frac column and it has to do you know 50 on each tray mass energy momentum fugacity vapor liquid balances and it's solving all this like when was the last time you solved a flash calculation 
uh, that wasn't like maybe a cubic equation of state that you had to guess and check your way through for a binary system and it was terrible, right? Never. And how about <laughs> these 30 components and like all of these different things? Yeah. It's just like what it's doing for you it's crazy. is unbelievable. Yeah. And there's two ways to think about that. One, it means that chemical engineering is effing difficult. It means that like to, to predict the interactions between phases and the reactivities and like where all this information off comes like from 30 components is it's, based yeah. off of hundreds of years of data and guesses and trials and errors and like you know trying to find models that work and you get this tool that's unbelievably powerful in yeah. what it does the other flip side is that because it's so complicated if you make the wrong assumptions or you choose the wrong fugacity package or property package it sucks yeah and it will give you nonsense and my biggest issue is people getting a flow sheet that works and then just assuming that these are the results exactly of yeah. of the lord like this is it yeah. this is like aspen says that this is it yeah. and this and, is it and they tell you like oh the temperature has to be minus 270 kelvins and it's like yeah. oh okay okay yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like you know that so just for those of us listening just a warning unbelievable tool magic really that it's yeah. able to do that that we live in a world where this is possible even when you and i were going through undergrad like we got to use i got to use like hysis which yeah, is Hysis. it yeah. wasn't owned by aspen at the time now it is but like we got to do like maybe one column at a time because yeah. that was the limitations mm -hmm. and now we've got probably the best flow sheeting and design course in canada yeah. in 3g04 yeah. and i'm, and I'm going to go on record saying that where like you're building all these different creative processes and, and it's up to you to be creative and you have the flexibility and that's because of uh, well, first of all, the fifty thousand dollars per seat per year that you would have to pay for Aspen Plus. But second of all, like the instruction and like, I just hope that people appreciate it for for what it's actually exactly. For. So yeah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a B as well. Um, it's specific, but it is important. It's a critical cornerstone mm -hmm. to like trying to contextualize your entire education in this program slash what you're gonna end up doing later on. Exactly. But it is buggy as all hell and kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, it is pretty cool. Anyway, that'll end it for the tier list. We'll take a really quick break and then uh, and then just like wrap things up. All right, Vince. Well, that's a wrap on another yeah. episode of the Heat Exchanger podcast. Yeah, and I just want to you know thank you for your pencil story. That was truly an S tier. Oh, pure gold. I, uh, story. you know, I, I'm still a little misty and, and people listening to this are going to think that I'm putting on airs that I'm just like faking. Uh, but no, no, that's like a legitimate, like one of the most like touching stories. I know it's a story about myself. So that kind of sounds dumb, but like, you know, to me, it's like one of the things that gets me the most emotional right uh, in recent memory anyway. And for um, those who don't really know Jake, Jake's a sentimental guy, you know, like he, I actually, he, yeah. I actually, he, he, yeah. I, I, and I'm saying this truly, genuinely, I'm not facetiously saying it, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, I am. I, I, I really do. I really do care. And I really do like appreciate um, sentimental stuff. I like sad movies and, and whatever, you know, I, I can get into it. I'll cry at a movie. Don't do you ugly cry though. I don't ugly cry. See, I do the, I do the man cry where like, I I'm trying to not cry, but then that like tear rolls down your cheek or something like that. And you just kind of like, Laura looks over from the couch and sees it. And I just shake my head and just, oh, man. you know, yeah. like, that's, that's me. But yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to do that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks also to our panelists before that. Um, talking a little bit about their experiences back at Mac, you know, the, the hybrid learning, they're doing things online and, and that sort of thing. And, and that was good to hear their reasoning. You know, it was yeah. good to hear what they're concerned about as they move back. Right. And they, they gave us some, some good Intel. I think I, I, who knows if, if other people will make use of it, but I know I will. And I know you will Vince, uh, you know, yeah. Make like, the adjustment. You know, some of the things like we know, and and but like to hear firsthand from students it's it's a different you know it, it's just a different feel you know and 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 kind of like give us that fresh perspective and and i really do appreciate our panelists so that was that was a fantastic uh, interview with with our students yeah and they gave us probably about an hour and 20 minutes of their valuable time during the middle of midterm season right everybody had a lab report due i believe one of them had a lab report due in your class right Vince? yeah <laughs> um, so, free extension but uh 
but yeah, you know, everybody's got lots of stuff going on and, and we were able to gather a pretty, pretty great group of people there. So uh, speaking of midterm season, our next episode, can we, can we try to, to give the listeners an idea of when that's going to be coming out? Sure. Um, probably sometime in November when midterm season is over and we'll talk about assessments. We'll talk about, you know, how, how things are going and, and what kind of worked and what didn't work. And then um, just to reflect on what assessment looks like. Yeah. And that's something that from the beginning of the pandemic for me has been a sticking point, right? So I've tried different things and I'm trying new things again this year. So let's take a moment to, to look back and say if that was successful or not. And success can mean a variety of different things. And, and maybe we'll theme, um, maybe we'll theme things around kind of the, the post midterm season blues and we'll see how students are coping as the weather gets colder, right? As it gets darker, um, we know what happened to everybody mental health wise and physical health wise last winter when everybody was kind of in the, in the bad way, but hopefully it's better this year, right? Things are kind of trending in the right direction. Yeah. Well, at least, you know, students would be with other students or at least some of the students would be with some other students, uh, for those who are in person. So hopefully that really helps them out. So for sure. Anyway, that's going to do it for us on episode five of the heat exchanger where we just exchanged some hot takes with our cool guests, uh, our cool guests this time being our very own undergraduate students. So that was great. I look forward to the next one, Vince. Yeah, me too. See you later, Jake. Take it easy, buddy. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. like i have this bad habit like once i find something i find funny i just latch onto it so i suck all of the the humor out of it until everybody just gets annoyed at me all right landon let's let's do it see, again. see what he just did see what vince it? just did there <laughs> <laughs> all right landon last last try all right third time's a charm oh say. man oh yeah so much dude, better crisp <laughs> dude, you yeah. could record a studio album with those things okay <laughs> awesome all right, fourth wall break for a second, Vince. Ah, there. That'll be what I look for in the uh, in the audio file to try to know where this is happening. We just need to scream again so that you we know. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. Ah. Okay.